Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, it's the Seminoles of Florida State taking on the Cornhuskers of the University of Nebraska. This game is the exclusive copyrighted property of WECA, and no portion of the game may be used without their express permission. Now, here's Tom Meese and Jim Crosby at Memorial Stadium. Live from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, 27 Sports presents Florida State football. This afternoon, the Seminoles of Florida State battle the third-ranked Cornhuskers of the University of Nebraska. Hi, everyone. I'm Tom Meese in company with 27 Sports Director Jim Crosby. And, Jim, the Seminoles, after last week's heartbreaking 10-9 loss at the Orange Bowl to the University of Miami, may make some changes this afternoon. Tom, even though it was just a one-point loss, Coach Bowden has demonstrated he's not going to stand pat. He's made five changes. Hardest Johnson moves in in a wide receiver position. Zeke Mowat moves in at tight end. Ricky Williams at, at tailback. And Eric Ryan at guard. And, of course, the big move is a walk-on at center, Jerry Coleman. The Florida State defense is still ranked among the best in the nation, but the rushing offense at the University of Nebraska is ranked number one, and that may present some problems for the Seminole defense. I look for the Seminole offense, though, to go to a three-wide receiver offense just like they did in the closing drive against Miami. The key players to watch today, Rick Stockstill, the quarterback of the Seminoles, who will be putting the ball up in the air quite often, a lot more than he did last week, and marvelous Jarvis Redwine, who averages 8.3 yards every time he carries the football for Nebraska. It should be a great one. Stay with us for Florida State and Nebraska. Jim and I will be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. It is a sea of red in Lincoln, Nebraska's sold-out Memorial Stadium, the 108th consecutive time that the Cornhuskers of Nebraska have sold out, and with good reason this week. The undefeated and third-ranked Cornhuskers against the 3-1 and one and either 16th or 18th-ranked Seminoles of Florida State, depending upon which poll you believe. I'm Tom Meese with Jim Crosby. Jim, the captains have met at the center of the field, and we're just about set for what I think is going to be one humdinger of a football game. You couldn't ask for better weather, Tom. It's just a beautiful day. If you like the color red, you'll love it here. And it's about 64 degrees at the game time. The wind's out of the north about 5 to 12 miles per hour, and the humidity at 59%. It's just a beautiful day for football. There you see the Florida State Seminole cheerleaders adorned in garnet and gold. And as you may surmise, there's a lot more red and white in the stadium today than garnet and gold. But we hope that we can bring you a Florida State victory before the afternoon is over. Florida State University is deploying to return the opening kickoff. The Seminoles won the opening kickoff. And, Jim, uh, we'll get a chance, unless there's a turnover on the, the kickoff, which we hope doesn't occur, a chance to see if Rick Stockstill in the offense will put it up right from the beginning against an awfully rugged Nebraska rushing defense. It's going to be very interesting because Nebraska has a reckless gambling-type defense, as I'm sure people heard in the pregame show. Coach Henshaw uh, told me this week that it doesn't seem like their defense cares if they make a big mistake because they know their offense will get it back for them. Larry Harris, Dennis McKinnon, and Michael Whiting are back in triple safety to receive the kickoff from, rather, from uh, Nebraska. And doing the kicking off will be number 49, Kevin Seibel. You see him there putting the ball up on the tee. The officials uh, are from the Big Eight primarily today. The uh, referee, chief referee, will be Howard Rowe. The umpire, Dennis Riggs. The linesman, Frank Ellis. Line judge, Hunter Jackson. Field judge, Edward Shannon. And the back judge, Tom Rolls. We're set to go. Nebraska 3-0 with wins over Utah, Iowa, and last week Penn State. The Seminoles 3-1, losing their only game of the season last week at the Orange Bowl. And the Cornhusker fans and Seminole fans here at Memorial Stadium are ready and set, and we're underway. There's Seibel's kickoff. This is a boomer deep in the end zone, and out of the end zone it goes. McKinnon just looks at it, says, we'll take the ball first and 10 on the 20-yard line. Kevin Seibel has been known to kick him right through the uprights on those kickoffs, Tom, and uh, it's kind of disheartening when a team scores on you and then they kick the kickoff right through the uprights. All right, that Florida State offensive line as the Seminoles go first and 10. At center will be Jerry Coleman, number 56, and this is the key substitution, Jim, this week. He's a walk-on, not even on scholarship, but he snapped every snap perfect in a JV game last week. First and 10 for the Seminoles. Stockstill at quarterback, of course, in motion goes Phil Williams. The back's in the eye of formation. Stockstill going to come out throwing. And the ball is intended out of the backfield for Ricky Williams, but Rick Stock still overthrew him. It'll be second and ten. Ricky Williams starting in place of Sam Platt. Uh, and one of the reasons that uh, Williams is starting is because he had a pretty good performance against Miami last week. And Coach Bowden uh, just doesn't want to stand pat 
with a loss and Williams of course has great speed they'd love to isolate him on a linebacker out there Zeke Malwatt started the game but Sam Childers bringing into play a tight end from coach Bobby Bowden it's second down 10 yards to go Whiting and Williams are the setbacks in the eye formation again stock still back to throw got some time now being rushed he's got to get rid of it he'll be taken down for a loss back at the 10 yard line and bringing him down is left defensive end Jimmy Williams out of Washington DC and all right let's take a look at it on the replay here's Rick Stocks go back and he is hit by Williams who has four or five speed for a defensive end and the other defensive end who is Derry Nelson who is an all big eight and they think an all American out here is 4.6 so they've got good defensive end play so uh, passing down early in the ball game and a loss of nine on the play third down to 19 from the 11 stock still all the time he wants he goes out of the backfield to Whiting Michael Whiting got some room Michael Whiting up to the 25 he did not get the first down but at least Jim he gives Florida State decent position from which to punt the football and they're trying to loosen up that defense as you see the teams uh, switching as the punter comes on Ron Stark and we'll have to hope that he has a the same kind of punting day he did last week all right here's the last player on the replay Rick Stocksell throwing to Mike Whiting you see Futch out in front of him and Whiting cuts back and there's just too many defenders around there for him to go all the way Dave legal is back to receive the punt for the Nebraska Cornhuskers and there is Starks punt it is a relatively short one it'll bound at the 40 yard line heads toward the sideline now and rolls out of bounds at the Nebraska Cornhusker 37 where it will be first down and 10 yards to go for an offense which leads the nation in rushing they average nearly 500 yards a game rushing the football about 130 passing so the Florida State defense uh, no doubt one of the best in the country will be up against it this afternoon Okay, we'll be looking for number 12 to get the ball quickly. Jarvis Redwine. I love that name. 8.3 <laughs> yards to carry. They call him Marvelous Jarvis out here. Jarvis Redwine. Andra Franklin is the up back in the eye. Redwine is the tailback, or what they call the eye back at Nebraska. One of the backs goes in motion, and here's Redwine with a pitch out. And Redwine gains about four up to the 41 yard line. Also in the backfield for the Nebraska Cornhuskers on that play. Number 24, Tim McCready, who played a lot against Penn State last week. And just as I say that, he leaves the lineup. One encouraging sign for Seminole fans, number 50 in there. Ron Simmons is playing. Todd Brown is split to the top of your screen. He is one of the split ends. And Mitch Crank is split to the bottom of your screen. It'll be second down, and they call it six yards to go to give us to Redwine. The eye back, he is stopped for almost no gain. Reggie Herring is in there, along with uh, Gary Futch. And a whole host of Seminoles. It'll be a gain of maybe a yard on the play, bringing up third down and four. Jarvis Redwine gained 179 yards against Utah, 153 against Iowa, and against a tough Penn State team last week, 189 yards. The Seminoles would love to hold him under 100. If they do, they think they got a good shot at this game. Third down and four. Again, the backs in the eye. You'll see that formation all day long by Nebraska. Ball at the 43. Back in motion for the Cornhuskers is McCready. Back to pass Quinn over the middle. It is complete to his big tight end. Quinn hits the tight end to Jeff Finn. So he had the combination of Quinn to Finn. And let's take another look at it coming up. All right, the Quinn to Finn combination. And uh, you see Jeff Quinn, who is a pretty accurate passer. He does a lot of short passing off of these play action plays. They, they like to get you looking for Red Mine or for Franklin and fake it to them and throw. First and 10 for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They call it at the Nebraska 49 yard line. Just underway here, I'm Tom Mees with Jim Crosby on Tallahassee's 27. Another exclusive telecast of Florida State football. Quinn can't make up his mind what to do with it, so he keeps it and he gains about seven yards down to the Seminole 44 before bringing him down is Jarvis Corsi, defensive end. Tom, I think one of the keys to this game is how well this defensive line for FSU can penetrate through the big offensive line of Nebraska because last week Penn State would sit back and wait and watch to see what was going to happen in the backfield and if you let this quarterback have any time you've had it. Tim McCready split to the bottom of your screen. He's one wide receiver along with John Noonan. So a couple of surprises there. Here's the pitch back to Redwine. He's tripped up. Nice play by Florida State's James Harris coming up and tripping up Redwine short of the first down. They will mark the ball on the 40. 
Well, it's near the 42-yard line, so it's about a yard and a half short third down. That was a heads-up defensive play by cornerback James Harris, who seems to get better and better each week, Tom. I, he came up very quickly and put the hit on Redwine and brought him down one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Redwine leads the game. Craig Johnson, number 30, replaces him at tailback. Andre Thompson, is, or rather Andre Franklin, is still in there at the upback. Franklin is the blocker, and the give on the pitch back is to Johnson. It'll be close, but I believe he has achieved the first down at the 7-0-40. We may have a measurement here. The referee is calling for timeout. They mark it right at the 40-yard line, and that should be a first down. And it is. First and 10 for the Cornhuskers, so Nebraska on the drive early, Jim. It'll be tough to get behind here and have to come from behind to win a game uh, under these circumstances with all this sea of red overlooking you. So I'll the Seminoles you. need to stop them right here. I, I think sometimes I'm in Moscow with all this red here. Anthony Steeles is split out wide to the right. Noonan is split out to the top left. The back's in the eye, and Quinn back to throw on first down. He goes for the eye back, Craig Johnson. And Johnson gathers it in for a gain of about five yards down to the 35-yard line before he is tackled by Paul Borowski. Okay, we'll have a replay on this one. As we watch Jeff Finn, they've got him set up in the eye. Jarvis Redwine not in there right now. He throws it over to Johnson, and Johnson was isolated on... Uh, uh, and Harrison made a nice cutback for a big gain. Jarvis Redwine inserted back in the ball game now. It'll be second down and five for the Cornhuskers at the Florida State 35. Quinn over the middle, almost intercepted. Intended for the tight end on that play. Intended for Jeff Finn. And he overthrew Finn in the general area was Bobby Butler. But I don't believe he ever saw the ball coming towards him. And Nebraska will have a third down and five in another passing situation. This is one of the biggest plays of the game so far as you look at that sea of red out here. Lincoln, Nebraska, I, it's a place I didn't think you could get to from Tallahassee <laughs> after about the third plane change there yesterday. I tell you, I, had, uh, I didn't have that much trouble, but I understand you folks uh, come on from Tallahassee had a lot of trouble. Of course, I came down from New England where it's beautiful this time of year. But more about that later. Third and five, Quinn. Nobody back the block. He's being rushed now over the middle. Complete to Jarvis Redwine. Now, does he have the first down? It'll be very close. Depends where they mark the football. I believe he is just short. They mark it just on the other side of the 30-yard line. And let's take a look at that one again. All right, this is one thing you don't want to let him do. Hit a pass to Redwine out in the open because this guy is dangerous. And there was pretty good coverage there. And it's going to be short of the first down as you see three Seminoles putting a hit on Redvine. There'll be a lot of people following him everywhere he goes today. Well, the Cornhuskers are going for it. Fourth and a half yard at the Florida State 30, the real first crucial play of the ball game. Baxter in the eye, Franklin and Redwine. The pitch is to Jarvis. He fumbles the football, and Florida State tackles Redwine in the backfield. And they recover the fumble. So the first break of the game goes to the Seminoles. It looked like number 64, Jarvis Corsi, is on top of it, and Florida State takes over first and 10 at the 35. Well, if you're going to stay with these guys here, you got to get some breaks, and that's definitely a break for the Seminoles, and now this offense has got to put it together and get it out of their end of the field. So the first big break goes to Florida State with 9.01 left in the first quarter, no score. All right, let's see if the Seminoles can get a drive of their own going. Rick Stockstill with the backs in the eye formation. Williams goes in motion. First and 10 from the 35. Stockstill being rushed, and he's down on the safety blitz. Coming in there with Sammy Sims. And Jim, the Cornhuskers, just through caution to the wind, Sims on a blitz, and nobody touched him. Yeah, they blitz the monster man, Sammy Sims. Sammy Sims, who had a broken jaw last year, and they didn't know how well he would return from that. Uh, apparently is 100% well. And this is something the Seminoles have got to do. They haven't tried to establish a running attack because of their problems in the offensive line last week. So it'll be second down and 21. A loss of 11 on the play. Back to the Seminole 24-yard line. Now here's a kind of reverse to Michael Whiting. That'll go nowhere. A loss back to the 18-yard line. It's coming in to shut that play down completely for the Nebraska Cornhusker. Big number 92, Derry Nelson, who's one of the fastest defensive ends in the country. There he is, 92. Yeah, Big Derry did a good job there. There was also a linebacker there. Uh, Williams was coming up very fast. And there were just too many red shirts there to do it to get outside. Uh, Coach Bowden does not like to see those backs cut the ball back up field on the reverse, but he didn't have much choice that time. No, he didn't, and the Seminoles, Jim, are marching backwards. It's now third and 28. <laughs> I don't envy Stockstill on this play. He's being rushed again, rolling to his right. Stockstill intended for Phil Williams, and Williams takes a hit. It was incomplete, way over his head, and the Seminoles will have to punt. Good coverage by Nebraska. 
Well, and you hear this crowd come alive. I can tell you they're really behind this Cornhusker team, and they need a great punt by Ron Stark here. Backed up, backed up down here to the 17-yard line and showing no offense so far. Well, the punt returners for the University of Nebraska, Dave Legal is number one is one of them, number 28. He's in uh, your screen to the left. Here's the punt from Stark. It is a high spiral. Legal being chased back to his 24-yard line. He does have some running room, though. Legal trying to turn the corner. He'll be knocked down right at the 25, where it'll be first and 10 for the Cornhuskers, and we have a penalty flag. A penalty flag on the play. Could there be a clip? We'll have to wait and see. The ball right now is marked at the Nebraska 25. The flag came a little late. We hope that it's, <laughs> that it's not a late hit. So I believe it is a clip, though. It looks like Nebraska is uh, backing up. That's right. It it's is a clip. clip. Well, this will push them back even farther. And, of course, there is no score. And should uh, the Cornhuskers uh, mess around with turnovers deep in their own territory, they could be in trouble. You know, Nebraska is one of the most penalized teams in the country. They averaged a penalty almost per series last week at Penn State. Freshman Brian Williams was one of the first men down, and he is really establishing himself <laughs> on the special teams. And, I, and he's a linebacker, and I remember a linebacker a few years back that first got the attention of the coaching staff on special teams, a fellow by the name of Paul Porowski, who was a leading tackler last week and a leading tackler on the team. The clip is charged against number 41, Kim Baker. So Mr. Baker can't be feeling too well about things as Nebraska takes over first and 10 on their own 13. No score, 7.29 left in the first quarter. Here's the pitch back to Redwine. Again, he has trouble controlling, and Reggie Herring brings him down after a two-yard gain up to the 15. So the defense has to stand strong here, uh, Jim, and, and give the offense a little operating room. Well, it is the most high-powered offense in the nation, but the Seminoles feel like they've got one of the best defenses in the nation, and it's going to be a classic struggle here all day long. Arthur Scott did a good job of fighting off the block on that side that time. It'll be second down, eight yards to go. They give it a gain of two yards. Split out wide to the right, Tim McCready. Bobby Butler will be covering him man-on-man. -man. Jeff Quinn rolling right, looking to throw, and he may tuck it away. No, he'll be bounced down at the 10-yard line by Reggie Herring, and he nailed Jeff Quinn for a loss. Okay, we're going to have an instant replay on this as you see Quinn rolling out and watch Herring just lowers his head and Quinn very wisely held on to the ball and took the loss instead of throwing it away. You know this offensive line that they're pushing around right now averages uh, 255 pounds. They're six three and a half in average height and they have an average 40 yard dash of 5-0 which is great for an offensive line. I'm glad I'm up here and not down there. I'll tell you that. Third down and 12 for Jeff Quinn and the Cornhuskers. Andra. Franklin is in the backfield along with Redwine and coming up the middle for no gain are the Cornhuskers and this will force a punt deep in Nebraska territory. So Ron Simmons helps make the tackle and forces a punt and I'm telling you there's going to be some pressure on this Nebraska punter doing the punting for the Cornhuskers. Number one Scott Gamar. Scott Gamar number one he'll be punting from his end zone. Gary Henry standing at the Seminole 42 yard line initially. He's averaging 37.2 yards a kick. So they should get good field position out of this one. Well, not that much pressure, really. Uh, the Seminoles stopped short of hitting the punter, and Henry has it at his own 47-yard line, tries to retreat and get some running room, but he'll go down at the 45. The tackle is made by Joe Adams of the Cornhuskers. It'll be first and 10 for the Seminoles with excellent field position on their own 45-yard line. That was a good kick and great coverage by Nebraska. The Seminoles have their best field position of the day. The the defense has changed the momentum of the game around if the offense can just take over now. Well, let's see what happens this time. The last time the offense marched, but they marched straight backwards. All right, Stock still at quarterback. The back's in the eye formation, first and ten. Bill Williams in motion. Here's the pitch out to Ricky Williams. Williams gains about three yards up to the 48-yard line. We're nearing the five-minute mark of the first quarter. No score. On Tallahassee's 27, Florida State football. The Seminoles and Cornhuskers. I'm Tom Mees with Jim Crosby. And think, go ahead, Jim. Uh, sorry, Tom. Sorry. I think uh, Coach Bowden took a little flack last week for staying with the run so long, but you see they weren't able to do anything passing-wise to start with, and that's because they haven't established anything on the ground yet. They're going to try to do that now. Well, Penn State tried that last week, and they did get around the outside sometime. However, Michael Whiting will get nowhere. He's pushed back for about a two-yard loss. 
Back to the 46-yard line. It'll be third down and nine. I was going to say that Penn State did turn the corner on Nebraska successfully a couple of times last week. But the Seminoles haven't really tried it thus far today. Whiting ran into his own man there. It looked like he might have a little bit of room outside, but we can see it a lot better. We're about 200 feet up in the air, Tom. Yes, we are high, and I do mean high atop the stadium. Third down, and will they call it 10 for Stockstill? A short drop, looking to throw now over the middle incomplete. Stockstill was pressured. In all fairness to him, I believe the pass was intended for Phil Williams, and the Seminole offense is completely shut down again, and Florida State will have to punt. Okay, that defense has got to duplicate what they did last time, and hopefully Ron Stark will kick it way down there and they get, keep them bottled up because you don't want to give this team too much of the field to work with there. The Florida State offensive line has been penetrated successfully three or four times, and Stock still hasn't had near the time to throw he had at Miami last week. Ron Stark is back to punt, and again, Dave Legal is back to receive the punt along with Ricky Lundquist. Stark's got plenty of time, a high spiral. And this will drive Legal back to the 13. He'll let it drop. The ball is inside the five. Can the Seminoles down it? They do at the two-yard line. The ball is down at the two, or is it a touchback? It's a touchback. The referee is signaling that the ball did go into the end zone. So the Cornhuskers get a break as they'll move it up to the 20-yard line. And we'll be back with more Florida State football in just a moment. If you think all insurance companies are alike, you'll like the difference auto owners make. Not only the way auto owners handles claims fast. Memorial Stadium, over 76,000, most of them in red and white to see the Huskers and the Seminoles. No score, 415 left to go in the first quarter. Nebraska has it first and 10 at their own 20. Jeff Quinn, the excellent quarterback. He's a senior out of Ord, Nebraska. The pitch back to Jarvis Redwine. Redwine trying to turn the corner, and he does for six yards. Running him out of bounds there for the Seminoles coming up to contain James Harris. All right, on the, on the uh, replay, we'll see. I believe it was Monk Bonasort and Reggie Herring. As you see, Redwine trying to get outside. Harris, Harris there, too, just like you called it. And there's Bonasort making sure that he's down. So a gain of six yards for Jarvis Redwine. It'll be second down and four at the Cornhusker 26-yard line. The only turnover in the game, a Redwine fumble, but the Seminoles could do nothing with it. They've done nothing on offense so far today. The pitch back to Redwine again, trying to turn the left side. And Florida State... Cannot contain him before he gets the first down. After the 33-yard line, Monk Bonasort had to run him out, but Redwine is very quick. Boy, it's just a thrill a minute when that guy gets on outside. This fan just, these fans just come alive. Jarvis Redwine won the uh, Hinky Dinky Husker Award last what? year. The Hinky That's Dinky given Husker? by a grocery chain out here. And mm. It's given to the most popular Husker, so they really look for Redwine to do big things the, every play. The Hinky Dinky, you're not kidding me, are you? No. First and 10, I'll deal with that later. First and 10 at the 33-yard line for Nebraska. Quinn straight back to throw on first down, rolling to his right now, and the ball is incomplete. A nice tackle that time for Florida State by Bobby Butler. The pass was intended for Anthony Steele's number 33, and before Steele's could control it, Butler came over to belt him. But the thing that is scary is that Anthony Steeles was open out yeah. there, and he was one-on-one. -on -one. That's a good man to be one-on-one -on -one with, Bobby Butler, because he's a pretty sure tackler. But they are getting men open on those passes. The problem is they're so devastating with their running game that they force you to try to stop that, and you get into single coverage situations a lot on these passes. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go for Nebraska at the 32-yard line. Quinn wants to pass again over the middle, intended and completed. To John Noonan. John Noonan, who's listed as a tight end, number 95, is in the Florida State territory at the 43. We've got another look at it. Let's watch John Noonan as Quinn sails it right over the linebacker's head. Well, he's really over the cornerback's head there, and it's a safety forced to make the tackle as James Harris was up a little too tight, and it was a big completion there down at the 43, Tom. All right, first and 10 for Nebraska, 323 left to go in the first quarter of play. Jeff Quinn, again with the backs in the eye, he wants to throw again, and it is complete. Out to number 24, Tim McCready, and McCready is down to the Seminole 21-yard line. Another first down. All right, we got another look at it, and as we said, it was a little disconcerting before when Anthony Steals the uh, wing back got open, and this looks like about the same play, and he's wide open. They're 
kind of trying to uh, stop the run in the middle and giving them the outside there on those little passes. McCready has hurt the Seminoles as he carries it down to the 21. First and 10 in Nebraska with their second threat of the ball game. First time down this low. They fumble the ball. Here's the give to Andre Franklin. And the back who does most of the blocking for Jarvis Redwine takes it himself up the middle for a nice gain down to the 14-yard line. Gain of seven will be second and three. In that defensive line now, Ron Simmons and James Gilbert are in. And uh, Gilbert's coming off right now, but they, Gilbert moved over one step and he went right in the hole that Gilbert had vacated the last time. 95, John Noonan, who caught a big pass moments ago, is now in. He will be split to the top of your screen. The tight end is Jeff Finn, big number 87. It'll be th second down. They call it two to go now for Nebraska. Deep in Florida State territory. The pat pitch back to Redwine. Redwine inside the 10. Down to the eight-yard line before Reggie Herring brings him down and runs him out of bounds. It's first and goal for the Cornhuskers. Boy, the Seminole defense is going to be called on here. Redwine had three players around him, but he just got out of it some way. He's not only fast, he runs with power. He, he weighs 203 pounds, so he's a strong runner. I'll say is he's very, very fast, too. When you combine strength with quickness, it's awfully tough. Jarvis Redwine, who averages over eight yards every time he carries the football. First and goal to Seminole eight-yard line. Andre Franklin and Redwine are the setbacks behind Quinn. Let's see what the Seminole defense can do here to stop the Cornhusker drive. Quinn straight back to throw, looking for the touchdown over the middle. Complete for the touchdown. Complete to Todd Brown, the split end, who was wide open in the end zone, Jim. He was totally wide open. I don't understand how he, how he got that free unless the backs got crossed up. And you see the balloons going up. It looks like the start of a Florida State game with these uh, red balloons going up in the air. But uh, they saved them until they got a touchdown, which they fully anticipated would come soon. And Nebraska's on top. Six zip is going to be tough. Kevin Seigel is in to attempt the extra point. Jeff Quinn is the holder. The ball will be kicked from the 10-yard line. There is virtually no win. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 1.54 left in the first quarter, the score, Nebraska 7, Florida State nothing. With 1.54 left to go in the first quarter of play, the Nebraska Cornhuskers are on the board. A pass from Quinn to his split end, Todd Brown. And the pass covered eight yards. For the touchdown, Nebraska leads it 7 to nothing. Kevin Seibel in there to kick off for Nebraska. Back deep in the end zone for Florida State is Dennis McKinnon, but Seibel's first kickoff to open the game sailed completely out of the end zone. So let's see what happens now. No win to speak of today. This one is a high spinner, and McKinnon will field it at about two yards deep in the end zone. He'll come out with it. McKinnon trying to go up the middle. He'll be knocked down at the 18-yard line. First and 10 for the Seminoles at the 18. And let's see if the Florida State offense can get on track now, Jim. Well, they definitely need to do something to get it out of this end of the field. And momentum is definitely on the side of the Big Red out here. Seminole cheerleaders looking for something to cheer about there on the sideline. Seminole bench is right down below our broadcast position. Rather unusual. Most places you go, the visiting team's bench is across the way. First and 10 for the Seminoles. Hardis Johnson and Phil Williams are split both to the left side. And now Williams goes in motion. Rick Stockstill, the quarterback, the pitch out goes to Harris. Harris wants to throw the ball downfield. He's got a man open. Ball. Oh, Bill Williams was wide open. Well, there's something we haven't seen. The ball is just overthrown, but let's give Harris some credit. He was under a lot of pressure back there. All right, we'll have another look at it. Larry Harris, a freshman from Gainesville, Florida, on the pitch out. It looks like it's going to be a sweep. He disguises it real well, keeps it tucked under his arm, and then he throws, and he was hit just about at the time he was throwing and that would have been a long gainer I don't think Phil Williams would have outrun that monster man but I think he would have gotten way down to about the 30 or so well that's the kind of play you need to sort of open up the game a little bit all right second down and 10 stock still being pressured on the rollout to complete the whiting whiting gets away from one man Michael whiting up near the 30 yard line he's got the first down and the first first down of the game for the Seminoles I think you can look for a wild, reckless game from here on out. The Seminoles going to have to pull out all the stops, Tom. I like that. I like Stockstill rolling out. He's been dropping back in the pocket, and they've been getting tremendous pressure on him. And Stockstill can tuck it under and run if he has to. All right, it'll be first and 10 for Florida State at the, at the Seminoles' own 29-yard line. Artis Johnson will split to the stop, top of your screen, and Phil Williams split wide to the bottom of your screen to the left side of the line. The backs are in the split formation behind Stockstill. 
Ricky gives it off to Whiting. It's a running play, and Whiting loses control of the football for a moment, but regains it and gains nine yards near the first down marker up at the 38-yard line. Good run by Mike Whiting. Now the little razzle-dazzle has opened it up a, a little bit. They've got him a little off balance in there, and we'll see it on the replay. Ricky Stockstill calling signals, and he hands it off on a little delay, and Whiting finds the hole well, keeps his feet, and goes up for about an eight-yard gain, Tom. They call it a nine-yard gain to be exact. Second down and one for Florida State. The first concerted drive of the day for the Seminoles. The give on the second down call is to the up back Whiting. It will be very close to see if he gets the first down. We're at the 32nd mark now of the first quarter. Nebraska 7, Florida State nothing. The referee has called timeout for measurement, so we'll keep it here while they measure and see if Florida State has the first down. And now the referee says, Mr. Chain Gang, come on in. Here he comes, and we'll see exactly how close or how far away the Seminoles are. All right, it's 31 seconds remaining in the quarter. 7-0, Nebraska on top, and they're going to take a look at that. And they stretch it out, and it's a little bit, little bit short. All right, third and inches. Yeah, six inches, I'd say. So a big play again for the Florida State offense. Coming into the game now for the Seminoles is Sam Childers. All right, third down and inches. The big red crowd here and flooring their defense on. And now we have one of the Nebraska men jumping off sides, and Florida State's going to get it the easy way. Well, you know, the center in there today for Florida State, Jerry Coleman, and he was, he no sooner got his hands on the football as he was knocked over, and it's uh, illegal procedure against Nebraska. That was David Clark that jumped off sides. He's just regained his starting position. They have a brother combination, Jimmy and Toby Williams, who were walk-ons from Washington, D.C., and who are both excellent athletes. They had been playing the end and tackle position, respectively. David Clark is now healthy, and he took Toby Williams' place today. All right, it's first and 10 for the Seminoles at their own 44-yard line. 25 seconds left in the first quarter. Nebraska on top, 7-0. Hope you're enjoying the football game. Other than Nebraska lead, stock still complete. Complete over the middle to Hardis Johnson. And he's got a first down in Nebraska territory at the 44-yard line. So the quick one over the middle is wide open and Stock still hits his man. Let's watch Rick Stockstill on the pass. He's completing 68% of his passes coming into this game. And Hardis Johnson with another fine reception. Hardis won his way back onto the into a starting role with that performance last week. That incredible catch he had against Miami last week. Well, the Seminoles will have to hurry to get off a play before the end of the quarter. And... They do not. That's the end of the first quarter of play. The score from Lincoln, Nebraska is Nebraska 7, Florida State nothing. We go with second quarter action. As you see, the Seminole cheerleaders with a little bit something to cheer about now. Jim is Florida State is on a drive now to Nebraska 44 with the Cornhuskers leading at 7 nothing. We start the second quarter. This will be a first and 10 for Florida State. Stockstill at quarterback. The pitch back to Ricky Williams out of the eye formation. Williams avoids two tacklers and gets back to the line of scrimmage. And you know what? That was a great run. Williams could have been tackled for a big loss. Let's take a look at it again. All right, let's see this good run by Ricky Williams again as he breaks some tackles. Ricky only weighs about 165 pounds, but he has great speed. And he got out of one tackle and just kept his feet moving, which is what you got to do when these guys grab you and turn what could have been a loss into a uh, uh, no gain. All right, Russell Gary, number nine, uh, was the man who finally stopped Williams. Actually, they say uh, Williams did lose a yard, although it's not quite as much as a yard. Call it second and 11 for the record. Stockstill straight back to throw. Got some time. He's going to run with it now. Stockstill over the 45, down to the 41-yard line. A gain of about three. It appeared that Rick was going to get some big yardage, but Nebraska came up tough to close it down in the person of their big defensive end, and that would be number 96, Jimmy Williams. And they, there was just nothing open downfield. You see Zeke Mowat running a play in from the sideline. Big play here, Jim. This is a big play. Seminoles really need to get down there and, and get something on the board. They mark the ball at the Nebraska 42. It'll be third down and eight for Florida State. Hardis Johnson, Phil Williams split to the bottom of your screen. They are wide. You can't see them. They're not in the picture right now. There goes Williams in motion. Stock still. Straight back to throw out of the backfield now to uh, Whiting, and he'll go nowhere but back to midfield. Nice play there by the Nebraska defense, diagnosing that play. 
Kim Baker, the man who was guilty of the click a little bit over in the ball game. One of the reasons this didn't go, they dropped back to a 4-4, and the linebackers were just sitting back there reading it. They were looking to see what the running back was going to do, and when Whiting turned up field, they knew he was going to catch it, and they were right there. Strong side linebacker Kim Baker shuts down another Seminole drive with 13-10 left in the half at 7-0, and Ron Stark is back to punt. Back there is Dave Legal and Rick Lindquist to receive for the Big Red at the Nebraska 10-yard line. Stark gets it away, almost blocked. Lindquist is signaling fair catch, and he's down at the 12-yard line, where Nebraska will take it first down and 10 yards to go. Seminole certainly could use a break down here. They definitely need to keep Nebraska down at this end and try to get some decent field position. As the Seminole defense has played fairly well today, Tom, uh, I think that they've already earned some respect from this Nebraska crowd. Frankly, the Nebraska fans didn't know much about FSU at all. They just expected to come in here and see another blowout, I think. I don't think it's going to be that way, although football games can turn around in a hurry, but uh, Florida State is proving the quality of its defense so far today. You're right. Nebraska has had the one drive, but that's been it. 7 nothing to score. First and 10 now from the 12. Quinn, the pitch back, and it goes to the eye back in the formation, and that would be number 30, Craig Johnson. Craig Johnson and Roger Craig are the two eye backs that spell Jarvis Redwine, and uh, Jarvis doesn't spend much time on the sideline. He carried 34 times last week against Penn State. They like to get the ball to him as much as they can, but he's uh, still out, I believe. In a four yards on the play by Craig Johnson. will be second down and six. The ball spotted on the Husker 16-yard line. Again, that eye formation so familiar to defenses who try and stop Nebraska. Quinn pitches out, and the pitch out is going to go for the first down. Going to go to number 33, Anthony Steeles. The 5'9 junior out of Sacramento, California, has it first and 10 if they mark the ball where his progress stopped, and they will. Uh, Cornhusker first down and a big one. That's precisely what killed Penn State last week. No defensive line penetration there. The quarterback had time to maneuver. Sometimes he'll reverse pivot. Sometimes he'll just do a straight pivot. Sometimes he fakes to the fullback. And, you know, they just do so much off there if they have time to do it. The first and 10 now. They mark it at the Cornhusker 24-yard line. Flanked wide to the left-hand side is Todd Brown. And back to throw is Quinn again on first down. Intercepted. Intercepted by Bonasort, I believe. Monk Bonasort has it in Nebraska territory at the 33-yard line. That is the fourth interception of the year against Jeff Quinn. And Bonasort was all along. And Monk Bonasort, as you watch the replay, sets a career reception record with 13 for FSU. And, of course, he had eight last year as he made third-team All-American. And Bonasort cuts back and, and uh, stumbles. There is a penalty flag, but I believe it's after the interception had already been made. And, and it is against Nebraska. Big break. Yes, they're going to move this ball back even further. It is a personal foul against Nebraska after the interception. And that big red crowd there, Jim, is kind of quiet. The ball is right now at the Nebraska 33. We've got 11.37 left in the half. And the referee says, let's march it back there another 15 yards. So the Seminoles with a big break make that another 10 yards. And the ball now is on the, oh, it is 15 yards. I'll add it up right. It's on the 18-yard line. First and 10 from the 18. The crowd's coming alive trying to shake this Seminole offense. But they're knocking on the door, and they need to get it in. I tell you, they need to come away with this with no less than three points. they got to get on the board somehow. All right, first and 10 Seminoles. The ball on the Nebraska 18. The pitch out to Platt, who's in the game. Platt on the reverse to McKinnon. He's going for a big loss. Back to the 29-yard line. And Jimmy Williams again, the defensive end, read that play perfectly. All right, uh, let's see this reverse not work because Jimmy Williams stayed at home like a defensive end should there. He was not suckered in. Too bad he didn't hand off to Platt because it looked like Platt was going to have some running room outside. Oh, yeah, Platt had plenty of room to roam, but in, instead it's a 10-yard loss back to the 28-yard line. It'll be second down and 20 now. And Stockstill's got to throw it. Here come the Huskers on the blitz. Stockstill is set for another loss back to the 38-yard line. Well, Nebraska knew he had to pass the ball, Jim, and they're coming in droves. All right, we've got a replay on it. They're double covering both wide receivers, and the tight end was not able to get open, and the defense has hind line, and then you see Waxter, and Waxter got him right there and slowed him up, and then uh, Williams put the hit on him. Well, I tell you, this has got to be demoralizing to the Florida State defense to play so well and have the offense 
being bollocked up like they are. They've taken themselves out of field goal range now. they got to get a big play here. They're down and 30. Another 10-yard loss on that play. Stock still straight back to throw. He's got some time now. Looking and he sacked again. Back at the 45-yard line. And I'll tell you, you can't have all day back there. Stock still had the time, but nobody was open. And making the tackle is Gary Nelson, number 92. They're able to rush four men, drop seven back, and still get the job done defensively. And he's just looking down there and seeing nothing but red surrounding every one of his receivers. And he can't just put it up for grabs. He's uh, just got to eat it. Ron Stark will now try and use the punt as a weapon. He'll try and nail it coffin corner style. Not a rush to speak of. He's going for the left corner. Let's see how successful Stark is. It's a pretty good-looking punt, and it is out of bounds. Where is it? On the two? Let's see where they mark it. Out of bounds on the Cornhusker three-yard line or thereabouts. Three or four-yard line. A great job by Ron Stark, who's been doing it all year long. Simply great kick by Stark. Stark averaging 46.2 yards a kick on 21 punts. 9.36 left to go in the first half. The score, Nebraska 7, Florida State nothing. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. The uh, football officials neglected to hold the game up while we were away. They marked that ball after the punt on the 20-yard line. They said it was a touchback. It's sort of a questionable call. So Nebraska has run two plays from their 20, and they have gained eight yards. It's third down and two at the 28-yard line. That's your situation. We apologize for missing the two plays, but the officials on the field would not stop when they were supposed to. So it is third down and two. The pitch out to Redwine being contained, and now he goes for a hole. Is open. Red line inside the 45. He fumbles the football, but they say he's down right there. Jarvis Redwine, first and ten for Nebraska. Let's take a look at a play that really hurts the Seminoles. The Seminoles had them down there deep in their own territory after failing to score, and they let Redwine watch him maneuver. All right, he cuts in and eludes the defensive tackle. Bonasort's off balance there. Bonasort is a safety. Once a guy gets past the safety, you're in big trouble, especially if he has that kind of speed. You see them carrying him, uh, and Arthur Scott trying to get him down there, and finally tripped him up by grabbing his shoe. First and 10, Nebraska at the Florida State 42-yard line. After that big run by Redwine, Quinn back to pass, looking for his tight end. Now it's his split end. That is McCready. McCready inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line, and Keith Jones brings him down there for a gain of about four. It's a short gainer, but they're mixing it up so well. And you start getting leery of these little passes like this, and all of a sudden there's Redvine with the ball. Andre Franklin has not carried the ball that much, and he's kind of devastating up in the middle, too. He certainly is. Into the game for Nebraska now on offense, splitting out to the top of the screen. He is number 33, Anthony Steeles. He's a dangerous receiver. It'll be second down and six. Quinn with the ball. Now the pitch out to Redwine. Redwine is in the open field. Jarvis Redwine bounds inside the 10 yard line he's out of bounds oh, no, now they say he stepped out at the 14 yard line we're gonna watch marvelous jarvis in action again as he pitches it out and see him coming around the linebacker Kurowski. when you miss a tackle like that they're not, never going to have the uh, speed to catch up with him when he gets out there keith jones trying to get him he stepped out of bounds back up field so it's first and 10 now after another big round gainer by red wine first and 10 for the big red of nebraska at the Florida State 14, the Huskers leading 7 to nothing. It's been a Nebraska defense, which has really been impressive, though. They give to Andre Franklin. Franklin, the up back in the eye, and he is stopped very abruptly by Arthur Scott and a host of other Seminoles. Maybe give him a yard gain. You, you just said a mouthful there. What has surprised me has been the Nebraska defense. We knew they had a great offense. We knew it's going to be hard to contain them. But the defense has really bottled up the Seminoles. And when the Seminoles got it to the 18th, as you see, Andre Franklin Day and his mother, I believe, and a brother are here. That's right. Game. North Platte, Nebraska, one of the surrounding communities in the Lincoln area, giving Andre Franklin his own day. A pickup of two by Franklin on that last carry. It's second down and eight. Jeff Quinn rolling to his left, looking for the touchdown, and it is incomplete. Oh, I tell you, in and out of the hands of John Noonan, who has really impressed me this afternoon, but he was wide open. He beat Keith Jones, and he dropped it. Here's a big break, because he was open. 
Franklin, if, if frankly, uh, Jarvis Redwine was open out there too, had he elected to flare it to him, he would have been one on one. That's a dangerous situation. I believe this is the first time that Jarvis Redwine's mother has been in a Nebraska game, and she's yep. here today to watch him play. Oh, that's all he needs is that inspiration, yeah. right? <laughs> oh, my. All right, third down and eight. The ball is still marked at the Seminole 12 yard line. Big play here for the Florida State defense. As they try and stop Nebraska from adding on a second touchdown. Jeff Quinn, the pass again, the same route, touchdown! Second touchdown catch of the day. Split in Todd Brown will make this touchdown reception, and you'll notice how badly Nebraska has the Seminole defense right at this moment off balance. They've been able to get red line outside, and they've been able to do a few things on short passes, and that you can't get more open than that. No, you can't. I'll tell you, that's the exact same pattern that Noonan ran the last play. And you hate to pick on anybody, but Keith Jones uh, was over there. He got beat. He was one-on-one -on -one with the wide receiver. That's tough. All right, in to attempt the extra point now is Seibel. The kick is up, and the kick is good. With 6.30 left in the first half, the score, Nebraska 14, Florida State nothing. Back to Lincoln, Nebraska. I hope you like red because we have enough of that in the stadium. There's some garnet and gold, the Florida State cheerleaders, but they're kind of down the dumps right now, trailing 14 to nothing. Let's see if the Seminoles can come back and get something on the board before the first half ends. 6.30 left in the first half, and it's been the combination of Jack Quinn to Todd Brown for two touchdowns in the Nebraska lead. Kevin Seibel moving into the ball now. A high end over end kick and back to receive Sam Platt is at the goal line. Now he takes it at the six. Sam Platt got some running room and Platt is up over the 20 to the 27 yard line. So good operating room and a good run back by Sam Platt. Well, it's all on the offensive shoulders right now. They've got to get down there and get something on the board. If you go in scoreless, two touchdowns, three touchdowns behind at halftime. Well, you can just about hang it up here. Well, I'll tell you, you know, the big uh, the big uh, series was the last time down when Florida State had at first intended the Nebraska 18 and came away with nothing, marched steadily backwards. That was, the, I think, the biggest series of the ball game so far. All right, first and 10 for Florida State on their own 28-yard line, says the scoreboard. Stock still on the give to the draw play. The draw play to Platt. And Sam Platt is up for good yardage, up to the 29-yard line. Make that the 34-yard line. All right, watch the blocking of the center, Jerry Coleman, a walk-on who's not even on scholarship. See him knock that man down. That made that play right there. Jerry Coleman, who had never played a down of a varsity game before, has done a super job. He hadn't miss, messed up one snap. What a way to break in, huh? Right. Against Nebraska at Lincoln. Gain of six on the play, second down and four. In motion goes Dennis McKinnon. The pitch out now to Sam Platt as he tries to turn the left end, and he does so successfully up to the 40-yard line. First and 10 Seminoles, but now the Nebraska defense is content to let Florida State rip off some yardage on the ground because the clock is, uh, well, it's 5.45, and we'll be running in a moment. Sam Platt has come back firing because he was demoted to second string, be not so much on uh, the basis of his efforts, but because Ricky Williams had played real well, and now Platt... Uh, really wants to win that job back. He looked pretty good on those two runs. Yes, he did. Pretty good blocking also. First and 10 Seminoles at their own 40-yard line. 14 to nothing, Nebraska. Tom Mees in company with Jim Crosby at Memorial Stadium. And back to passes. Stockstill. He's got Hardis Johnson. It is no good. Incomplete. Good play that time by Johnson because Nebraska just missed an interception. Rodney Lewis, the left cornerback, was back there. And uh, the receiver, Johnson, knocked the ball away from him. All right, on the replay, we'll see just how closely this came to being an interception as Stockstall threw it a little bit short. As you see Johnson having to slow down and come back, and it was right in the hands. And, uh, the defender didn't put it away. No, he didn't. I'll tell you what, that ball is thrown about three yards further downfield, and Hardis may have a touchdown. That's true. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the 40. Again, Stock still back to throw. He's being rushed. He's got to get rid of it. It is complete over the middle of flat. A nice completion for near the first down, but not quite. Up to just short of midfield. Let's call it the 49. All right, they blitzed the linebacker that time, and we'll see it again here on the replay. And one thing that, uh, yeah, Brent Williams was the linebacker who blitzed in. Watch him, number 66, coming in the left side of your screen. And Stock still got it away to the running back. And that's what you got to do to cut down this rush. I mean, that rush has just been firing in there, not giving him a time to do anything. 4.49, the clock running. There's a timeout on the field with a score. Nebraska 14, Florida State nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Tom Bees with Jim 
Mr. Crosby back at Lincoln's Memorial Stadium, and as we return to live action, Sam Platt picking up the first down on a pitch out from Stocksdale after that Florida State timeout. It'll be first and ten at the Nebraska 49-yard line as Bill Williams comes in to replace Barry Voltapetti, wearing number 99 today. They put Voltapetti in a tight end uh, when they are going to run a running play. And the Seminoles, if they could score here, score a touchdown, they're back in it, Tom. Oh, sure. Well, they're back. They're not out of it yet anyway, by any means. Only 14-0. Stockstill rolling to his right now. He's going to keep it. He's got some running room. Stockstill to the 40, and Stockstill picks up the first down, I believe. It is either right at the stick or right beyond it. Let's see where they mark it. On the replay, we'll check it out as they try to see if he made a first down or not. They're going to move the chains up. He did make a first down. Rick Stockstill looking downfield and seeing a now familiar picture. Everybody covered. He decides that he'll loosen them up with a run, and there's Brent Williams coming over, and the, de the defensive back, uh, number 41, coming up to make the hit. All right, first and 10 Seminoles at the Husker 38-yard line. Nice run by Stockstill. Stock still over to Sam Platt, who's now in there at tailback, and Platt has stopped after a yard or two gain. Jimmy Williams is in there, and he is uh, accompanied by several Cornhuskers, including Sammy Sims, number six. They're starting to mix the pass and the run, as you see Bobby Bowden sending Phil Williams in from the sideline with a play. All right, it'll be second down to nine as they give Platt only one yard gain on that play. That could have been a decoy for a passing play. We'll see. The clock running, 3.30 left to go in the first half, 14-0 Nebraska. Stock still, no bones about it this time. He's going to throw, now he's under a rush, gets away from Sims, unloads it, complete, complete to Platt, and Platt is inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. He's got another first down. Was a good job of improvising there, as we'll see Rick Stockstill on the replay get out of the grasp of some tacklers and throw it to Sam Platt, and... The Seminoles are on the move. Ricky Stockstill looks, and he just gets away from uh, the Monster Man, who they were blitzing once again up there, and he throws it to Platt, and Platt gets a nice gainer. First down. The officials start the clock again. We have three minutes, five seconds, and running. And left to go in the first half. Tom Mees with Jim Crosby from Memorial Stadium, the 108th consecutive sellout here in Lincoln. And why not? The Huskers have been a national power for a long time, but the Seminoles trying to get on the board. First and ten. McKinnon is the man in motion. And Stockstill again back to throw. Got some time over the middle. Complete to Platt. He puts it away, and he's down to the 20-yard line. Gain of seven on the play for Sam Platt. It's nice to see them working Platt into some uh, pass patterns now because he was a wide receiver, caught 32 passes the past two years as a wide receiver, so he gives an extra dimension when he's in there at a running back. Well, the Nebraska defense is being tested now. This is a concerted drive by the Seminoles. After taking the kickoff, following the second Nebraska touchdown, these kids are playing well on this drive. Let's hope they can get it into the end zone for a score. Second down and three, and the give is to Platt. Out of the eye, back formation. He may have another first down. I'll tell you, it's becoming the Sam Platt show as they mark it at the 17. That should be a first down, Jim. Sam likes to carry it a lot. He likes to be in the action. Uh, wherever the action is, that's where Sam wants to be. And they're going to have to measure. This one is pretty close. Yeah, we'll take, we'll keep it here and take a look at the measurement with two minutes, two seconds left to go in the first half. Florida State has used one of its three timeouts, so the Seminoles have two more to go on uh, in this half. And it is a first and ten for Florida State at the Nebraska 17-yard line. All right, now the last time Florida State got down this, uh, as you see where we are in this beautiful press box here at Nebraska, the last time the Seminoles got down this far, Jim, they went backwards. Can't do that now. That's right. They need seven. Yeah, three. Well, three is three, but seven would get you right back into the thick of this game. The split receivers are McKinnon to the top of your screen, Hardest Johnson to the bottom. Michael Whiting and Sam Platt, the running backs. Stock still bakes the Platt. Got some time. Looking for the touchdown on the end zone. It is incomplete. Intended for Hardest Johnson, but back there defending was Rick Lindquist. Okay, if it had been a little bit farther, it might have been a touchdown there, and we'll have a replay of it as Hardis Johnson uh, in the corner of the end zone. Nice fake, little play action, and Stocksell is looking, throwing to his right, and he just couldn't quite get it to Hardis, and it could have been a reception or an interception or anything there as they fight for it. That'll stop the clock. 1.39 left to go on the half. Both split receivers now to the top of the screen. Second and ten. And the give on the running play to Mike Whiting. He fumbles but falls back on top of it. I believe he's, he has it.
back. Yes, he does. And actually picks up a couple of yards down to the 14. It's still Florida State ball. That's eating up valuable time. We're less than a minute and a half now, Tom. And this is a big play. They got to try to get it in on this one. If, don't, if they don't, they'll have to settle for a field goal. They're down an eight. Very big plays. The clock running down. 115 and running here in the first half. Bill Williams leaves the ball game as McKinnon comes in with a play from Bobby Bowden. A minute five seconds. 14 to nothing to score. Third and eight. They got to get it down to about the seven. Stock still. Going long. Intended and incomplete. Intended for McKinnon in the end zone. That was an exciting one. Yes, it was. We'll watch Dennis McKinnon once again. They hit a pass just like that against East Carolina for a touchdown. And you see Stocksville's throw is just over the outstretched fingertips of Dennis McKinnon. So Bill Capice comes on to see if he can tack at least three points out of this drive on the board and get the Seminoles on. The ball will be kicked from the 22-yard line. It's a 32-yard attempt angle to the right. The snap is good, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 54 seconds left in the first half, the score, Nebraska 14 and Florida State 3. A 32-yard field goal by Bill Capice with 54 seconds left in the first half has put the Seminoles on the board. The score now, Nebraska 14, Florida State 3. I'm Tom Mees with Jim Crosby. And Capice is set to kick off now from left to right. Anthony Steele's number 33 and Ricky Simmons number 7 standing at the Cornhusker goal line to return this kickoff. And as soon as the referee blows the whistle, and he does, we're set to go. So here comes Capice into the ball. It's a high end over ender. It will go deep in the end zone, and Simmons drops it in the end zone. He'll have to down it, which he does. It's a touchback, first and ten for Nebraska on their 20. So at least the offense was able to tack three points on Jim at the end of that last drive. Maybe they'll be able to go in and regroup and figure out how they can stop this uh, Nebraska offense, and it looks like the FSU offense is getting squared away. All right, first and 10 for Nebraska at the 20, of course. The one thing you want to make sure you do now with only 54 seconds left is don't give up anything cheap. Don't make it any worse than it is. It's still quite a ball game at 14 to 3. Jeff Quinn, who directed the, the Cornhuskers to a 21 to 7 win last week at Penn State, still in their quarterback, and Quinn hands off to Redwine. Redwine gets good yardage, but I believe the Florida State defensive line is giving him that 8-yard run up to the 28-yard line in hopes that... Uh, They'll just let the clock run out. We have a timeout call by Nebraska with 45 seconds left to go in the first half. And we'll keep it here. It's 14 to 3. And what do you think Bobby Bowden and his offensive brain trust is trying to do down on the field to regroup for the second half? I don't know, but what bothers me is the way that Nebraska hit those passes. Uh, it may be Bobby talking to the defense this time because although the defense had played well to start with, uh, they did have some breakdowns that cost them these two touchdowns. And it's Todd Brown on the last touchdown pass was as wide open as any receiver I've ever seen. You're watching Seminole Football, 1980 on WECA television, Tallahassee's 27 in Tallahassee, Florida. An exclusive sports presentation of Channel 27. And Jim, uh, we'll be on the road for our last road telecast come, I believe it's October 25th in Memphis, Tennessee against the Memphis State Tigers. That should be a good one, too. Uh, it shouldn't be as tough as this one. <laughs> no, uh, frankly, it shouldn't. <laughs> but that's still a few weeks away. All right, it'll be second out, two yards to go for the Nebraska Cornhuskers after that eight-yard pickup by Redwine. Nebraska called a timeout. Maybe Dr. Tom Osborne is going to put some more points on the board or try anyway. Here's Redwine with the ball. He's got the first down over the 30-yard line to the 31, making the stop on that play, James Corsi, and that'll stop the clock while they move the chains. Gives me an opportunity to say hello to the Action News team, Jerry Brown and Mary Ann Laughlin and Beth Campbell watching back in Tallahassee. Invite people to watch Action News at 5.30 and 11 weekdays. 32 seconds remain. 29 seconds now and running the clock here at Lincoln. And you keep thinking that uh, Nebraska's going to put it up and Quinn wanted to, but then he says, uh-uh, I'm not going to turn it over. And he tucks it away and takes his uh, gain, as slight as it may be, of a, about a yard or so, making the tackle for the Seminoles, Scott McLean. 10 seconds well, they're not going to get another playoff, Tom. Looks like we're going to go into the half, 14 to 3. Yes, the clock running, 3, 2, 1. And that is the end of the first half of play from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. The score, Nebraska 14 and the Florida State Seminoles. Price, and they want to start a tradition of everybody wearing war paint, and a lot of people don't like to paint up their faces, so they have the stick-on kind. 
and uh, it'll be available for the next home game. Well, the fans at Lincoln are roaring as they anticipate the second half getting underway. And it's no secret that the Seminoles are going to have to continue to play tough defense and get their offense a little bit more in gear. 46 yards total offense isn't going to beat many teams, let alone Nebraska. Well, it's such a pleasant day. You're not going to wear anybody down in the heat. FSU has beaten some teams at the end on conditioning, but you're not going to do that here. So they're going to go head and head, and I think Capice is about ready to kick it there. Yes, he is. Bill Capice, the Seminoles in their gold pants and white shirts moving left to right. There's Billy. And back to receive the kick on number 33, Anthony Steele's number seven, Ricky Simmons. The referee blows the whistle, and we're second to, set to go with second half action here from Lincoln. Tom Mays with Jim Crosby. Hope you're enjoying it despite the deficit. And look at this. Capice's kickoff leaves the end zone. So Nebraska will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Also back there uh, in the area was Roger Craig to field that one, but he had no chance. Well, I think Capice wants to show he can kick just as well as that Nebraska kickoff man who kicks him through the uprights a lot. But Capice has been kicking him out of the end zone there. Capice was ready to kick when we saw him last night in front of the hotel. He looked really uh, like chopping at the bit. That's right. All right, it'll be first and 10 Nebraska. Their own 20-yard line, the man who's done most of the damage for Nebraska, Todd Brown, the split end is split out to the left side on first down. And Jeff Quinn hands off to Jarvis Redwine, who uh, falls forward for about three and a half yards. Reggie Herring, the primary man to bring him down. All right, they want to hold him down here and try to get good field position, get on the board quickly here in the second half before momentum uh, comes back to Nebraska. FSU was playing pretty good ball toward the end of the first half. Yes, they were. That last drive was impressive, even though Bobby Bowden, I'm sure, was disappointed he didn't end up with a touchdown and had to settle for the three. A gain of three for Red Wine, who now has 93 yards in the day. It'll be second and seven. And Quinn will decide to keep it, will not pitch it out, and he has just short of the first down, gain of about six yards. Monk Bonasort coming up, along with Paul Porowski and Ron Simmons. They're going to place it, Jim, at the 29-yard line. It'll be third and one. Just good blocking on the right side of that line there that time by uh, Randy Schlusner and Dan Hurley opening up a hole. And Schlusner is 6'7", 242. He doesn't miss a meal. And he can really move some people around out there. Third down, one yard to go. The handoff to Redwine. He's got the first down over the 30 to the 32-yard line. Thought for a moment he might have bobbled that ball, but he did not. Redwine hangs on for a gain of about three. And it's first and ten for the Cornhuskers at their own 32-yard line. Nebraska is noted for being a big play offense, not a ball control offense. But when they came out against Penn State last week and in the third quarter, they controlled the ball for 11 minutes. They may be trying to do that here. Now let's see what happens. I know Florida State doesn't want to see him have the ball for 11 minutes. Quinn gives to Redwine, or this time Redwine is stopped on a good play inside by the Florida State defense. And in that area, we'll see who made the tackle. Number 67 for the Seminoles, Mark Mutzik brought him down. Got another look at it here coming up, Tom. And you see Ron Simmons uh, being pushed away uh, by the uh, center, Dave Remington, who's one of the fastest centers I've ever seen. He gets off the ball so quickly you think he's offside, but it's right after he snapped it. Motzik and Arthur Scott. Arthur Scott actually made the primary hit that time for Florida State. No gain on the play for Redwine. It'll be second down and 10. Man in motion. And we have a flag on the play. The pass is complete across the middle. It is complete to the tight end, Jeff Finn, for the first down, ostensibly, but hold everything. It's flag day back at the uh, line of scrimmage, and I'm sure it's going to be against Nebraska. All right, let's see if we can pick up what the infraction was. A little bit of a bobble there. There may have been something... Uh, an illegal procedure or something in that in that line. I believe Paul Porowski was somewhat screened by the uh, referee on that back there. The illegal procedure is the call, and of course Florida State will accept the penalty. It will march the ball back to the 27-yard line or that vicinity, and instead of a first down for Nebraska, it'll be second down and 15 yards to go. So a break in some measure, at least for Florida State, is coming into the ball game for the Cornhuskers. Anthony Steeles. He replaces Tim McCready, and Steeles is a very dangerous receiver, as is Todd Brown, and both of them are split. So it's second down and 15. The back still in the eye formation. 14 to 3, the score, if you're just tuning in on 27. Here's the pass out on the flat. It goes to Redwine, and Redwine is brought down for no gain. 
And the man bringing him down, Mark Motzik from Wyandotte, Michigan, he made the tackle. And the man that made the play was Keith Jones. He came up quickly and refused to be blocked out there. And he got his hands on him, slowed him down a little bit, and Motzik had reacted quickly also and put the hit on him. That's the same play that the Cornhuskers scored on last week at Penn State. Play just like that, but Florida State was there waiting for it. Big play now, third down at 15. A passing down for Jeff Quinn. See if the Seminoles decide to blitz anybody. They do not. Quinn straight back to throw. Looking over the middle. Got a man open, but the man fell down. And that was John Noonan. Noonan was in front of Larry Harris. But luckily for Florida State, or make that James Harris back there. Luckily for the Seminoles, Noonan fell down, and Nebraska will have to punt. The ball was thrown behind him, and the Seminoles are going to get the ball now as a result of that. So in to do the punting duties, only for the second time today that I can recall, as we take a look at the Florida State sideline briefly there, is number one, Scott Gamar. Back to receive is Gary Henry. He's standing in the vicinity of his own 25-yard line. Gamar will get this off from about the 17. Here comes the rush. It's a fumbled snap, and Florida State has it. The Seminoles, first and 10 at the Nebraska 17-yard line. And on top of that football, I believe it was Harvey Clayton, number 24. It's breaks like this that turn ball games around. And let's take a look at it again on the replay. The snap is right to him. He just uh, lost concentration, I think, and didn't grab it. And the uh, Seminoles have the ball on the 17-yard line. You see right back there, uh, that was Bobby Butler. And uh, Butler finally got it. Butler and Clayton were both there. Okay, first and 10 for the Seminoles. Stock still back to throw. Out of the backfield for Whiting. He's got it at the 20, to the 15, and down to the 12-yard line. A gain of five for Michael Whiting. All right, there was a pretty good rush on there, and Stock still had to get it away a little more quickly than he wanted to. If he could have led uh, Whiting properly, that might have been six, because Whiting had to take a little time to get started. As you look at uh, Dr. Osborne, Tom Osborne, the coach who's won 62 games, or 68 games here since 73. It is second down and five for the Seminoles deep now in Husker territory. Nebraska almost offsides. A long snap count. The pitch back to Sam Platt. Platt is down to the 10 yard line. Gain of two on the play. It'll be third down and about three for the first down. And the biggest play of the ball game so far for the Florida State offense because Jim, uh, you gotta come up with more than a field goal here. Yes, they need a score very badly, and it looks like they're trying to make a decision there. They're going to send in Sam Childers, which means they'll probably throw. I looked to see if they would send in Bolt to Petty. That would be a tip-off as to whether they were going to run or not. I believe they're going to put it up this time. Well, Childers is in there with the other tight end, Zeke Mowat. So that would normally indicate a running play. That's right. Let's see what happens. It's third and three. The fake to Platt. Back to pass. Stock still incomplete. Intended for Childers at the five-yard line. And back there guarding Childers was Russell Gary, the strong side safety. All right. Nebraska was ready for this. I believe that's the same play they scored the touchdown on at Miami with Childers in the corner of the end zone. And Sam tried to put a little fake on him there, but Stock's pass was overthrown. And it was pretty good coverage there. Would have, had to, would have had to be a perfect pass. All right, the ball is being marked on the 17 for Bill Capice's field goal attempt. It'll be a 27-yarder angle to the right. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 10.49 left to go in the third quarter, the score now, Nebraska 14 and Florida State 6. So the fumble, the snap by Nebraska's punter, Scott Gamar, ends up in a Bill Capice field goal of 27 yards, and the Seminoles are with an eight point to the Huskers now, with still lots of time in this game. 10.49 left in the third quarter. Billy Capice is in position to kick off. Back to receive the kickoff, Ricky Simmons and Roger Craig for the Cornhuskers standing at the goal line. I'm Tom Mees with Jim Crosby, and this kick is out of the end zone, and Nebraska will have to let that one bound out of there and take it first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Some scores, Jim. All right, Clemson beating Virginia Tech, a future FSU opponent, 13-7 in the third quarter. UCLA 17-0 in a surprise over Ohio State in the third quarter. Penn State losing to uh, Maryland, 21 Missouri, to, that's Missouri. Or Missouri, I'm sorry, 21 to 16 in the third quarter. Alabama with a tough battle at Kentucky, leading 14 to nothing. And as you said, it's 23-21. Michigan, Notre Dame now ahead of Michigan in the fourth quarter. It's Notre Dame ahead of Michigan State in the fourth quarter. And that's six minutes left in that ballgame. Okay, first and ten for Nebraska in their own 20. The pitch out the red wide, and he gains no more than two yards. Reggie Herring coming up from his linebacking spot to do the containment. It'll be second down and eight yards to go, and uh, that carry, even though it's only for a couple of yards, may put red wide right at or over the top 
of the 100-yard mark for the day. He should be pretty near it. He had 90 in the first half, and he's run the, the ball three times, I think, uh, coming back here in the second half. It'll be second down to nine. They give Redwine only a gain of a yard, although they put the ball two yards upfield. That's something screwy there. All right, second down to nine. We'll go with the scoreboard. And the give is to the up back, Andre Franklin, and Franklin is belted down hard by the Seminole defense in there to hit him first was big number 64, Jarvis Corsi, and only a gain of about three on the play. The ball is up to the 24 to be third down and six. Seminole defense has frankly gained the uh, respect of Nebraska here up to this point, but really they didn't come in looking for respect. They came in looking for a win today, and this Seminole team was determined to get one. And they still have a shot at it, oh, just eight points down. Very definitely, 14 to six the score, and still just less than nine and then 10 minutes to go down the third quarter. So there's all day left. Redwine leaves, and Craig Johnson comes in to replace him on a big third and six play. Jeff Quinn making the run. Quinn under pressure, has to get it away. It is incomplete, or is it incomplete? Let's watch him. It was pretty good pressure on Quinn. Quinn was very cool. Threw it just before Jarvis Corsi hit him. And he was actually throwing for steals, I believe. And Todd Brown with great concentration on the ball. That was Bobby Butler defending on that play. Bobby was there, but that was a perfect throw. First and 10 for the Cornhuskers. Big play for them. Gets it up to their 47-yard line. I apologize for calling it incomplete, but the angle there was deceiving. Here's the pitch out to Andre Franklin. He'll be dragged down for a loss back at the Nebraska 45. And Paul Porowski makes the tackle, and that was Craig Johnson on the carry, not Franklin, Craig Johnson. Craig Johnson coming in to spell Jarvis Redwine, and Paul Porowski, who had, was in on 20 tackles last week against Miami, 10 outright by himself, made a very fine defensive play. This is big-time college football here, Tom. Oh, big time at its best, no doubt about that. Steve Davies, reserve tight end, is in there on the left side, and Todd Brown, who's caught two touchdown passes today, is flanked wide at the top of your screen. It'll be second down and 12, a loss of two on that last play. Quinn rolling to the right, wants to throw the ball. He does. It is intercepted by Keith Jones. Jones is inside Nebraska territory, and the Seminoles have a first down at the Nebraska 46. Great play by Jones. The pass was intended for Johnson. I was watching Keith Jones, and those safeties try to read the quarterback's eyes, and he, he knew that was going as a wobbly pass, didn't have enough zip on it. Keith Jones played it perfectly, and the Seminoles are right ready to get back in this game in Nebraska territory. That ball was intended for Todd Brown. Again, some of these numbers in the Nebraska sunlight are hard to read, but at any rate, we do know that Florida State is the first down. They mark it on the Nebraska 47, so let's see what the Seminoles can do now. First and ten, the fake, the flat. Stock still rolling right, throwing complete to Zeke Mowat. Zeke Mowat down to the 40-yard line, a gain of seven, and it's second and three. Zeke Prendergast Mowat. From, You're kidding me, that's his middle name? Prendergast is his middle name. He's from Wachula, Florida. They think he's going to be a great one. Watch Zeke in action. Notice the protection now. You couldn't ask for better protection. Start of the game when it, Nebraska was firing out. Now. FSU has them off balance. Well, FSU getting that fumbled punt early in the third quarter, and now the interception. The pitch back to Sam Platt. Platt inside the 40. Platt stays on his feet. Down to the 37. He is near the first down. It will depend where they mark the ball again. How many times have we had close plays on first downs? The Seminole offense is gaining confidence by the second, Tom. Third down, about a half a yard. They're going to mark it at right on the 37 yard line and the Seminoles have to get to the 36 and a half wouldn't you know it all right third down and less than one and that's the Nebraska defensive unit which has been pushed around a little bit frankly in the second half but coming into the game for the Seminoles at tight end for some blocking is Barry Boltepetti and out comes Hardis Johnson that pretty much ensures that they're going to run it Boltepetti is a good blocker well you know the coaches say if you can't pick up a half yard don't deserve to win anyway on the ground pitch back goes to Sam Platt he's got the first down and more he is dragged down at the Nebraska 32-yard line, making the stop for the Cornhuskers, number nine, Russell Gary. Sam Platt's running as well as he has run all season, and he has had two games where he gained more than 100 yards. He was disappointed with his effort last <laughs> week when he only gained 20 yards, but people are going to come to realize that was a very, very tough Miami defense that FSU played against last week. And again, on this play, we're going to have Zeke Mowat in there with Sam Childers, so two tight ends in there on first and 10. Out comes Hardis Johnson. The ball is placed at the Nebraska 32-yard line. Let's see if the Seminoles can convert this interception by Jones into points. Here goes Stockstill, going to keep it. 
Rick Stuckstill inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. Stuckstill, I think uh, discretion the better part of valor in that play as he went down more of his own accord than somebody hitting him. But one of the things that has loosened up their defense, too, is the fact that Stockstill is running some now. If he sees everybody dropping back, he's going to run it, and they got to be wary of that. The more things you can get them thinking about, the better situation you got. Second down, two yards to go for the Seminoles. Ball just inside the Nebraska 25. Stockstill sets his team down. Rick Stockstill gives now to Platt. Platt avoids a blocker. Sam Platt inside the 20, and he drives to the 17-yard line before being dragged down by Andy Means, the right cornerback. First down. We're going to have a look at Sam Platt on this first down. Fakes to one direction and gets him off balance to the left and cuts back and shows good speed to the outside, then just lowers his head and his power football right there for first down for the Seminole. That's Andy Means, who gets an awful lot of ink out here. He's one of the fine cornerbacks around in the Big 8, but it's a first and 10 situation out for the Seminoles. The ball is on the 17. 14 to 6 the score. Florida State trailing. Stock still rolling to his right. On the run. Throws. First and goal at the five yard line. Make it the four. I was watching Phil Williams all the way. He ran a beautiful pattern as we're going to see this on the replay. Stockstill with the play action to freeze the linebackers. And Williams ran right down to the sideline or to the goal line and then came back a couple of steps and he was wide open. And the Seminoles have a first and goal. All right, they mark the ball, Jim, back at the six yard line, but it's still a first down. And goal. Artis Johnson comes out of the game. Phil Williams will go split to the top of your screen. Zeke Mowat and Sam Childers, the two tight ends in there. Whiting and Platt are the setbacks. The pitch out to Sam Platt. Platt for the touchdown! Sam Platt for the touchdown! Six yards, and the Seminoles are within two points of the Cornhuskers. How about that? Sam Platt on the right side. I almost knocked myself out on the glass here, Tom. I was so, <laughs> so excited about that. And watch Platt on the touchdown run as he lowers his head. And it's 14-12. They're going to go for two to try to tie this thing up. That's right. Bobby Bowden goes for two now. Even if he misses, he's really not that much worse off because the field goal would still put you ahead. Well, Rick Stock still has called a timeout. So with 5-17 left to go in the third quarter, the score, Nebraska 14, Florida State 12. We'll be right back. Two-point extra point effort, which would tie the ball game is if successful. Keith Jones interception has led to the touchdown. Let, now let's see if Stockstill can push it in for the two. The crowd is roaring at Lincoln. Stockstill back to throw, rolling to his left. Does throw, it is incomplete. No good. So with 5-17 left to go in the third quarter, the score remains. Nebraska 14 and Florida State 12. We'll be right back. I'll tell you what, Jim, the Cornhuskers in Nebraska know they're in a football game now as Ricky Simmons and Anthony Steeles are back to receive Bill Capiz kickoff. There's 5-17 left in this third quarter, and take heart, Seminole fans. The lead for Nebraska's only two was 14-3 at halftime, a Capiz field goal, and a touchdown run by Sam Planet. It's 14-12. That two-point conversion was attempted for Phil Williams. It was incomplete. And Nebraska will again have to take the ball first and 10 of the 20, as Ricky Simmons has no choice but to down Capiz kickoff in the end zone. Well, Tom, the only thing that that missed two-point conversion means is that the game's not tied right now. It, I don't think has destroyed FSU's momentum at all. No. They know they've got a whole quarter and fi plus five minutes, 20 minutes left in this game, and they know that they're handling Nebraska right at this point. At this point, momentum, who plays for just about every team in the country, is on Florida State side. Okay, let's see what the Seminoles can do now to stop Nebraska. Quinn and company, first and ten at the Husker 20. The back's in the eye formation. And Quinn is throwing incomplete and almost intercepted. It was intended for the tight end, Jeff Finn. How do you like that? Jeff Quinn to Jeff Finn. <laughs> in a nut get you, but uh, Reggie Herring was in the area. The ball was tipped off of Quinn's hands, and uh, in fairness to Florida State, they couldn't have anticipated that ball for an interception. Yeah, Bobby Butler, if he had looked up instead of being making the tackle, which you can't do, <laughs> you've got to make that tackle there, he could have had an interception. Maybe. Tim McCready is split out now along with Todd Brown, the burner who's caught two touchdowns today from Quinn, both from short range. Quinn wants to throw again, now decides to pitch out instead to Jarvis Redwine, and he's got some room. Jarvis Redwine up to the 40, but we've got a penalty flag, and I believe we're going to have a clip against Nebraska. Let's see. 
Redwine is out of bounds at the 41. We're going to see this again. All right, on the replay, we'll see where the clip occurred, I believe. I think they clipped uh, Monk Bonasort. I'm not sure. But you see, he has plenty of time there to let the play develop, and that's bad news because that gives Redwine right there. There's the clip on the ground there. Uh, it took uh, somebody right out of the play. I couldn't see the number. And Jarvis Redwine's gain is wiped out by a clip. So a big break for the Seminoles now as they'll march Nebraska instead of up at their own 41. They're going to march the ball back now from the point of the infraction, which was the 35. It'll put it back at the 20, which was the original line of scrimmage. And this drive started. So all things are back to the beginning with one exception. It is now second and 10 from the 20 instead of first and 10. The Nebraska Cornhuskers are trying to win the 199th game played or in the history of this uh, Memorial Stadium. It'll be their 199th win. I'm sure that they're nervous about it right now. Second and 10. Todd Brown, the only split receiver. He split far, and I mean far, out to the left. Jeff Quinn giving the ball to Jarvis Redwine. Redwine picks his spot up over the 25 to the 27. Redwine eluded the tackle of James Gilbert. Gilbert had him around the ankles but could not contain him. And the tackle was finally made by Jarvis Corsi. Here's Corsett. the replay. Uh, you see Gilbert grabs him and lets him get away. This is a twisting, whirling man to bring down. The eye back, Jarvis Redwine. Third down and three yards to go. Pick up of seven on that play for Jarvis. Ball at the Cornhusker 27. Obviously, they have to get to the 30. On count by Quinn, he fakes to Redwine, keeps it himself, and Quinn has got the first down up to the 34-yard line. A good fake that time by Jeff Quinn, and it took the Seminoles, James Harris, to bring him down. Let's see the play again. Watch the action in the backfield. You see the fullback going right up the middle. Good Redwine uh, following him, and now he fakes. He fakes like he's going to pitch out to that wingback coming around and keeps it. Braston 10, Nebraska at their own 35-yard line. So the Cornhuskers overcome that last clipping penalty. Quinn, the pitch out to Redwine this time, and Redwine is stopped almost at line scrimmage. Fumble, and Florida State has the football. Jarvis Redwine fumbles. Let's look at it again. I believe Reggie Herring is the man that knocked him free of the ball, and let's watch it on the replay and see it, but a tremendous break for the Seminoles, and they are threatening to go ahead now. Jarvis Redwine, watch Mr. Intensity. Reggie Herring lowered his head, put it right on the ball, and knock it out of Redwine's grab. And Alfonso Carriker, number 76. Alfonso Carriker comes up with a football for Florida State. And the Seminoles have a chance to go into the lead if they can put some points on the board. First and 10 at the Cornhusker, 34. Stark still giving the ball to Platt. He is going to be dragged down for a loss to the 39. And a big play for the defensive front four, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. In there was Toby Williams, and also in there for Nebraska. We're going to look at that play again with Henry, Mike Bruce. Henry Waxer, 275, is also in there, and he, he's got him uh, in a death grip there. And the Seminoles lost yardage. They've got to come back and hit a pass here. All right, the loss on that play, five yards back to the 39. It is second down and 15. Bill Williams is split to the right. Artis Johnson split to the left. And Whiting, the only setback, he'll get the pass out of the backfield. Mike Whiting gets down to the 36-yard line, but it's only a gain of three, and that'll bring up a third down and 12. Well, I look for that three-receiver, wide-receiver offense in there on this one. Well, let's see as we take a look at the uh, instant replay. And Stockstill, they're getting good pressure once again. He's not getting the protection he did in that last drive. That touchdown woke up the Nebraska defense, and you see it's just some swarming red shirts around there bringing him down. Zeke Mowat comes in with a play from Coach Bobby Bowden. Third down and 13 yards to go for the Seminoles. They have it at the Cornhusker, 37. Stock still straight back to throw. Got the protection over the middle. Complete to Michael Whiting. Michael Whiting has the first down at the Cornhusker, 21. And the tackle on the play by Russell Gary, the strong safety. All right, let's watch this play. This is an exciting one. Michael Whiting delayed and came over the middle as the wide receivers were going down deep and taking all the secondary back there. He gets behind the, the uh, linebacker. He's got wide open spaces and gets a first down. First and 10, Florida State at the Nebraska 22. 14 to 12, Nebraska. They give to Whiting the up back in the eye formation, and he is brought down by number 97 for the Cornhuskers. 
And that would be, uh, let's Tob check. That's Toby Williams. Toby Williams, all right. He uh, hasn't made that many tackles today, but Toby brings him down. He's a 6'4", 244-pound sophomore out of Washington. A gain of four yards in the play. It'll be second down and six from the 18. All right, that's Jimmy Williams' brother. They put him back in with, they got the brother combination at end and tackle there now. Double split receivers now for Florida State. Bill Williams and Hardis Johnson. The fake to plant out of the backfield. Stock still over the middle for Williams. Incomplete. Williams wanted pass interference. The referee will hear none of it. Covering on that play for Nebraska's Rick Lindquist. Boy, it sure could have been a call uh, one way or another. Uh, in fact, Stockstill went all the way downfield to check on it because uh, Williams, frankly, was trying to cut back into the middle and the guy was holding him up. He wasn't holding him physically, but he was in his way leaning against him. So another big play, Jim, for the Seminoles on this drive. Third down and six, should they not make it? They're well within Bill Capice's field goal range. But Bobby Bowden wants the touchdown, as I'm sure all the fans of Tallahassee watching this game do. Third down and six. Williams in motion. Stockstill gets the snap. And a give on the reverse to Whiting. Whiting cuts back. No gain. In fact, he lost three yards. And Nebraska was not fooled on that play. Derry Nelson making the tackle. All right. Bill Capice is going to have an opportunity to tie it up as you watch this loss. And some of the fans who do not like the reverses that FSU runs, that Bobby Bowden likes to stick in there to keep the defense honest, won't like that one because it went for a big loss. All right, this is going to be a 40-yard attempt by Capice. 30-yard line is where he'll kick it from. The snap is good. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Florida State has the lead with 116 left to go in the third quarter. The score, Florida State 15, Nebraska 14. Three turnovers by the Nebraska Cornhuskers here in the third quarter have led to a Florida State Seminole lead of 15 to 14. Bill Capice, the momentary hero with that 40-yard field goal, putting Florida State on top, and Bill is ready to kick off. And back to receive for the Nebraska Cornhuskers will be Ricky Simmons in company with Anthony Steeles. Capice kickoff carries Nebraska back into the end zone, and we're going to have a run back on this play, a run back up to about the 13-yard line by Roger Craig, who was inserted there at the last moment, and Craig is brought down hard at the, well, they're going to mark it at the 12 and a half. That was Ron Hester who came down and made a very fine tackle, and Bill Capice from Chaminade High School in Hollywood, Florida, is putting on quite a show here today. He's really stole the show with his field goals and his long kickoffs. I'll tell you, that punch snap that was bobbled, the interception by Keith Jones, and the fumble by Jarvis Redwine have cost Nebraska the lead, and the Seminoles now hang on to the one-point lead as we have 112 left in the third quarter. Nebraska goes first and 10 from their 13-yard line. And now let's see if Jeff Quinn and company open it up. The pitch out to Jarvis Redwine. You know you got a key on him, and uh, Ron Simmons does just that as he and Mark Motzik bring Redwine down after a three-yard gain up at the 16. The Seminole defense has, has gotten the picture that they can they can do the job here, and that, you know. This is how important field position is, Tom. Nebraska hasn't had any field position this half. That's right. I tell you, you can't get too tricky back here in your own end because uh, a turnover here is really murder on you. The Seminoles hoping for another one, hoping they can force it. Here goes Quinn. He wants to throw. It is incomplete, intended for McCready, covering over there Bobby Butler, but Butler had good position, and the throw, frankly, was not a good one from Quinn. I want to point out that there's a man in there at defensive tackle now who just made a big play of few plays back getting uh, his first extensive playing time in a Florida State uniform number 76 Alfonso Carriker. This guy is going to be a super player in the future. He's a defensive tackle right now playing here at Lincoln Nebraska. It'll be third down and six yards to go for Nebraska. Big play for the Big Red or the Cornhuskers if you will. Simmons the nose guard starts to make a charge in there and uh, the pass is dropped out to Redwine he's at the 20 and that's as far as he'll go actually the 19 when Bobby Butler brings him down in company with uh, Keith Jones yeah I believe that's Keith Jones made the hit whenever yep. you see a solid tackle that backs him up like that in the secondary most of the time it's Keith Jones that made that tackle now let's watch it this is totally dangerous to let Redwine get get out here with the ball and you see uh, a nice block out there took Corsi out of it but Jones with a solid tackle. If he hadn't made that, it's bye-bye. Scott Gamar is back in the punt. He'll take the snap at about his five, get it off from about the 10, and back in single safety, Gary Henry at the Seminole 35-yard line, and we have an official timeout, and that's the end of the third quarter of play. With the score, Florida State 15, Nebraska 14. There you see the picture from the end zone of Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, a sea of red, but Jim Crosby, the red for the moment is subdued. 
because Nebraska is back to punt as we open the fourth quarter. Florida State has that one-point lead, which is not a big one, <laughs> obviously, but we are in the last quarter of play. Well, if anybody doesn't think Florida State is developing into a national power, I'd, I'd like them to look at the scoreboard right now. Absolutely. I bet you there's some raised eyebrows around the country. Whether it will end up that way, we'll find out in 15 minutes. Gamar punts. It is a high spiral. Gary Henry calls for the fair catch. He has it and bobbles the football. Who's got it? Henry fumbles the football. It is loose. Bonasort lands on it for Florida State. Now the question is, did FSU have it or Nebraska? They say Nebraska at the Florida State 48-yard line. All right, this is going to be a very interesting replay. Uh, somebody, some official thought that he could see under that pile and see that a Nebraska guy had it, had control of it long enough to say that they recovered. Let's watch the punt. And you see, I had a feeling that he was wobbling around too much under that, and he fumbled it, and now it's just a big pile up, and let's see if we can see anything. I don't think since it's coming from an end zone shot that we'll be able to see. Now, somebody kicks it out of how, there. How can, loose. The, how can the officials see that somebody had control of it there? I don't there, know. there comes the ball. I, I don't, don't see how you can see that. For the second week in a row, Florida State is victimized by what has to be a questionable call. And that's being polite about it. First and 10, Nebraska, the Seminole 49-yard line. Henry did fumble it, but I don't think he fumbled it away to Nebraska. However, the Cornhuskers do have it. That's the reality. And on the first down, Nebraska runs the ball for a three-yard game in the person of Andre Franklin. Arthur Scott pinched in and tackled him there and did a good job. See Bobby Bowden on the on the sideline throwing his hands down. He's not uh, he's, he's just not happy about that. No, and I don't blame him. I don't want to play the part of a homer, Jim, but I really don't blame him. That, that was a tough call to accept. You got a lot better eyes than we do uh, and our television camera, too, if they could see that. All right, it is second down and seven yards to go. Quinn back to pass. The Seminole defense coming to him. Quinn puts it up. It's way overthrown for the receiver. Butler makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. So it will go as an incompletion. And coming in there with some good pressure was Gary Futch, and he hit Quinn hard after Quinn got that pass away. It'll be third and seven. They may be putting Bobby Butler one-on-one -on -one with Todd Brown after the problems that they've had before because Bobby Butler always draws the toughest receiver on the other side. Uh, no matter who it is, he's had been up against some tough ones. Todd Brown's one of the greatest he's faced, I imagine, though. John Noonan and Tim McCready are the split receivers on third and seven for Jeff Quinn and the Cornhuskers at the Florida State 46 after the Gary Henry fumble. Let's hope the defense can hold here. Franklin and Redwine in the backfield. Over the middle, complete, complete and incomplete. All right, dropping that football was Craig Johnson. Johnson had snuck in there to replace Redwine. The fake was to him out of the eye back position. Then Quinn faded it back to throw. Johnson had it and dropped it. It'll be fourth down and again. Nebraska has to punt, but this time they have a chance to pin Florida State way back. They had a safety blitz on that time. Keith Jones was in there pretty quickly, and maybe that's why the ball wasn't thrown that great, but it was catchable. Mark Motzik limps off the field, but he appears to be okay. Just an ankle turn, and in the punt again is Scott Gamer from the Florida State 46-yard line going to try for the coffin corner. It's a high spiral. This thing's going to go way into the end zone. He kicks it out of the end zone on the fly. So Florida State with 14 minutes and one second left will take the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. I don't think that Nebraska wanted Gamar to punt that ball out of the end zone. In fact, I'm sure they did. That ball uh, went into the state of Kansas or whatever's <laughs> next to us here. He really really was probably trying to get the ball high and let some, let him down it within in the 10, but he just got too much foot in it. Don't you know Kansas is a dirty word in Nebraska? Oh, Kansas. I thought Oklahoma well, was both a dirty of them. word They're both here. dirty words. There's Dern Jayhawks and <laughs> Dern Sooners. That's almost like the Florida Gators uh, in Tallahassee. All right, first and 10 for the Seminoles to give us to Platt on a running play, and he's dumped for a two-yard loss. Coming in there for Nebraska, Henry Wexter from Epworth, Iowa, making the tackle. We have a replay for you as the motion is to the right and Platt tries to cut it back, but it's just a very, very fine tackle. I think that's Kurt Heinlein out of Bellevue, Washington, who had back surgery last year. They weren't sure that he would come back. Back surgery is something that hard to come back from to play football, but he did a good job there. You're watching Seminole football on WECA television, Tallahassee's 27. Tom Mees with Jim Crosby. The Seminoles lead at 15 to 14 over the Cornhuskers in Lincoln, but we have 13 minutes to play. Second down and 12. Over the middle, complete and incomplete to Sam Platt. He dropped it at the 20-yard line. I don't think Sam would have had the first down anyway. Stock still on a deep drop, and Platt just couldn't hang on to the football. Well, it would have had to depend on how fancy a running he was going to do after he caught that, but 
The fact is that he didn't wrap it up and you got to catch it first. The Cardinal rule of pass receiving It's going to be third and long and the Seminoles are you know they're not playing it real cozy for being in their end of the field. I like that. I like that. Uh, if you try so many times you'll see underdog teams come into Nebraska and try and sit on a one or two point lead. That's no lead at all. You got to go the, with the way that you've got gotten into the lead. And that is throwing the football. And here's Stockstill doing just that. He has the time. Now he is hit and down at the six yard line. The ball came loose but Stockstill still has it. Nebraska claiming that they have the ball but not this time. But Florida State has to punt. Okay, let's watch it. Rick Stockstill just had to wait too long to try to find somebody open. Nobody open, so he holds it, holds it. He's hit. He fumbles it, but he falls on it. All right, so now Ron Stark will be under pressure. He'll have to punt from the back of his own end zone. As that fumble, if it does nothing else, the fumble that was called on Gary Henry, it gives Nebraska a chance for great field position. They got to get down there and cover this punt quick. Rick Lindquist is back to cover this punt or receive it. Lindquist is down there at the 35 yard line along with Dave Legal and Legal is going to be hemmed in and dropped at the 34 yard line. First and 10 for the Cornhuskers at their own 34. That's a great punt by Ron Stark. What a fantastic uh, punt. I was just trying to add that up. That's the value of Ron Stark. He kicked that ball from the six. So that's 44 and then 16 more yards. That's a 60 yard punt Tom. Unbelievable. Ron Stark. He's the nearest thing I've seen to Ray Guy since Guy played at Mississippi State the way he's punting the ball this year. The two split ends now for Nebraska. Anthony Steele's in there with Todd Brown. It's first and 10 for the Huskers in their own 34 after that 60 yard odd punt by Ron Stark. Jeff Quinn the quarterback will pitch out and almost no gain for number 30 Craig Johnson. Paul Porowski nailed him in there. Boy this defense is coming alive. They're really doing a super job. Harris up quickly. Porowski over quickly. And no gain. It'll be second and ten. I'll tell you, you talk about containing to the outside as we get two new receivers in there. McCready and John Noonan. McCready number 24 and Noonan going out to the top of your screen. Number 95. Second and ten. The clock running 1150 left in the game. The Seminoles with that precious one point lead. Andre Franklin is the running back along with Craig and Craig is stood up by Porowski after about a three yard game. Make that Craig Johnson. I keep getting Roger Craig and Craig Johnson mixed up. Well the the swarming Seminole defense has has made uh, Nebraska get a little cozier here. They're not throwing it like they were when they had them on the run before. But you know you hold your breath Jim with this uh, Nebraska yeah. where they got a, the likes of Todd Brown and uh, those people in there and Todd Brown is now out of split end along with Steele's. You just hold your breath and hope you can shut them down. Only takes one play. They're down in six now. Huskers need to get up to the 44 yard line of Florida State for a first down. Rather, the 44 of, their, of Nebraska. We have flags in the Nebraska backfield. The pass is incomplete. Intended for Craig Johnson was thrown behind him. Good pressure put on that time for the Seminoles by Arthur Scott. And we may have some holding going on in the Nebraska backfield. It is illegal motion, not holding. And again, the penalty flag and uh, the pass was no good. Florida State may elect to decline this and force Nebraska to punt. They've already signaled from the bench to decline it, and the Seminoles are going to get it back. And wouldn't it be nice if Gary Henry, who was in a crucial point of the game last week against Miami, was heading for the goal line when he slipped down, if he could do something like that right here. I'll tell you what, if you folks ever doubted the fiber of this Florida State team, you cannot doubt it anymore. They had a big turnover there at midfield. They held Nebraska off the board, and with the help of a Ron Stark punt, they forced Nebraska into bad field position, relatively bad anyway, and now Nebraska has to punt. Gamera is in there, and again, Gary Henry in single safety. Scott Gamera gets it away. It's a high spiral. Henry will have to go back to his nine, make that the eight-yard line. Gary Henry is tackled up at the 14-yard line. So with 10.46 left to go in the fourth quarter, the score remains Florida State 15 and Nebraska 14. And we'll keep it right here for the floor. On first down, Florida State hit a pass to Phil Williams up to the 25-yard line. And uh, the second down play was to Sam Platt, and that got up to the 29. We apologize for missing those two plays, but again, the officials on the field when we gave our cue for a commercial uh, did not pay heed, and there's nothing we can do about that if the officials let the play go on. We now have an injured ball player on the field, and uh, we'll try and identify him for you. I believe it's Andy Means, one of the great linebackers or other cornerbacks for uh, Nebraska. He's getting and, up now. And that would be a big blow to their secondary if they didn't have Andy Means in there for the rest of the game. 
And you see him limping off and getting a big hand from the Cornhusker fans. I think we got a replay coming up on that, so let's take a look at it. This is a pass to Williams here. This is the first play. While we're away on the commercial break, this fine pass was completed from Stockstall to Phil Williams. And uh, coming back, the Seminoles just ran for four yards on the next play. So at second and six, you're up to date. The ball's at the 29-yard line. And here's Tom. All right, second down and six for the Seminoles. Ball on the 29-yard line. Williams in motion. The pitch out to Platt. Platt can go nowhere. It'll be no gain. Wrapped up that time by Toby Williams, the big youngster out of Washington, D.C., the brother of Jimmy Williams. And it'll be third down and a big play for the Seminoles as the clock continues to run now with 9.55 left in the game. And Dr. Tom Osborne on the sideline and his Huskers are down by one point for the Seminoles. See Eric Ryan, 62, who is getting his first start uh, today. He's done a real <laughs> fine job at, at guard moving in uh, at the spot where Lee Adams was playing the last few weeks. Florida State football, an exclusive sports presentation of Tallahassee's 27 WECA-TV. Channel 27 in Tallahassee. I'm Tom Mees with Jim Crosby on the third and six. Stock still back to throw. Got plenty of time. Gets rid of it over the middle. Incomplete intended for Whiting. And Whiting was covered on that play. Although he may have made the reception if the ball had been thrown a little bit better. Kim Baker was on the coverage. And Florida State's Ron Stark will be called upon to punt again. Kind of looked to me like that might have been tipped a little. Even if he had made the reception, there were a lot of red shirts around him. And he was still about six yards shy of a first down. So Stark has got to do it again. There might be some rush coming from the Cornhuskers here because Dave Legal is the only man back. Yeah, I think he'll try to block it. Ron Stark at his 15. He'll get it off from around the 20. It's a perfect snap. Here comes the pressure. The punt is off. They do not rough him. And Legal will take it in at about the 25. He's being hemmed in, and he'll go down at the 26-yard line where Nebraska will take over first and 10. And making the tackle for Florida State that time, the primary hit, Ricky Williams. That's right, Ricky Williams, who started this game at tailback and has now seen Sam Platt come, over, come in and take over, is doing his job on the special team. A very big series coming up now, Jim, for the Florida State defense, which is among the top ten of all the defensive teams in this land. That's right. Only giving up 132 yards a game coming into this one, Tom. 9-18 left. Seminoles lead it 15 to 14 on the strength of a Bill Capice field goal from 40 yards. Jeff Quinn and the Huskers have it at their own 26-yard line. Quinn hesitating, now pitching out to Jarvis Redwine. Redwine over the 30. Redwine is out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Pete Jones and Reggie Herring combined to knock him out. This is what puts the excitement in the Corn Husker offense, and it puts you on the edge of your seat when you see Jarvis Redwine heading to the outside. You see him on the option, pitching out at the last second. Paul Borowski just not quite fast enough and got a man on the ground slowing him up. But finally, they get him out of bounds. So a pickup of some 10-plus yards for Redwine, and it's a first and 10 Huskers at their own 37. Making a pickup of 13 on the play. Jarvis Redwine over the 100-yard mark again. Andre Franklin on the first down, and Paul Borowski is in there to help bring him down after a gain of two or three yards. And James Gilbert also having a hand in that tackle for the Seminoles. Ron Simmons, I don't see him in there on this defensive series. Yeah, he's just come out for a few plays, I think. He's been in there most of the time. Uh, no, he's in there. Oh, he's in there now. Okay, yeah. number 50 is in there. That's, I'm glad I was wrong, I'll tell you. I hate to see Simmons out of the lineup. Second down and seven. Franklin and Redwine. The back's in the eye formation, but no running here. Quinn back to throw over the middle. It is complete to the tight end. Jeff Finn for the first down in Seminole territory at the 47. We have a replay on it. Jeff Quinn to Jeff Finn. As you see them lining up in the eye. And he rolls back. He's getting good protection, and that's the key to completing passes right over the middle to Jeff Finn and finally being hit by Paul Porowski. James Gilbert and Scott McLean are out of the Seminole lineup now for this first and 10 play. The ball in Florida State territory at the 47. Clock running, 8.20 left in the game. Seminoles by one. Quinn to the air again. No, the pitch out to Redwine. Seminoles have it contained, though, and Jarvis Redwine brought down for a loss. Porowski and Bobby Butler, and they were ready for marvelous Jarvis on that play. Boy, that's what you got to do. You got to get there before he gets up a good head of steam, and we're going to watch it under replay again as they fake one step to the right just to try to get the, the defense started in the wrong direction because they figured Jarvis is fast enough to go outside and get there, but Bobby Butler's pretty fast, too, a 4-3-40 he's run. I'll say that's fast. Four, All right. 4-3-3. Four, three, three. <laughs> a loss of two on the play. It'll be second down and 12. Jim Cotera in there now, replacing Andre Franklin in the eye backfield. 
The pitch out again is to uh, Craig Johnson. Johnson came in for red wine at time, and Johnson into Seminole, Seminole territory at the 42. That is not enough for the first down. Almost five yards short, and this will bring up a big third and five play. You said it. A big, big play here. The Seminoles have got to hold them on this play and make them turn it back over. I think they're out of field goal range. If they could throw them for a loss and get an incomplete, they'd have to punt. Field goal kicker for the Nebraska Cornhuskers is Kevin Seibel, number 49. He does all the placements. All right, third and five. Craig Johnson is still in there with Cotera in the backfield. Anthony Steeles is in the slot now, and Johnson goes in motion. Quinn yeah. only goes right, and he's going to be blitzed and brought down for a huge loss at the 49-yard line, making the tackle Arthur Scott. I think Keith Jones was a safety blitzing in there. We saw it before. We called it the last time when they had an incomplete pass, and they had good success on it that time in rushing him, and nobody picked up Jones. And see there? Yep. Keith Jones coming around and Arthur Scott helping out. He was so fast I didn't see his number in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll force Nebraska to punt the football. Gary Henry, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes right now. All alone at the 10-yard line. Let's see what Gamar's punt does this time. It is a wobbly one. It will be short, and Henry is going to let it bounce. It goes into the end zone, so the Seminoles get a break. And with 6.55 left to go in the third quarter, Florida State will take the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And, Jim, now time becomes a factor in this game because uh, it's on the side of the team that's ahead, and Florida State is by one point. A good drive is a necessity here. The ideal thing to happen here is to drive it down and use up a lot of the clock and get a score. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, you can't play it cozy. You can't just run it. you got to mix it up still. First and 10 for the Seminoles at the 20-yard line. Stock still rolling right, looking to throw. He does throw. Complete. It's a nice, safe pass out of bounds at the 25-yard line to the tight end in that play, and that was Zeke Mowat. Zeke Mowat from Wachula, Florida. Where is that? I wish you hadn't asked that. You don't know. All right. <laughs> it's not been, near Tallahassee anyway. No, I've been through there, but I can't remember where it was. Uh, he, he came from a, a small high school, and, you know, he, he they didn't play a lot of real sophisticated ball. They think he's going to develop to be a real great one here, though. Second down and five. Pick up a five on the pass to Mowat. The give now is to Sam Flat. Flat avoids a couple of tacklers. Hard running up to the 28-yard line. Nice run by Sam Flat. Finally dragged down on the play by big number 66, Brent Williams. It'll be second, uh, third down, and a big two. And I mean a big third down play. Uh, probably the most overused phrase we, we are having today is a big third down play. But well, this is a biggie. I mean, that's the only way to describe it. It's a cliche. And you know what I say about cliches? They are only cliches because they're true. That's right. All right. Williams and Artis Johnson are the split ends for Florida State. The give is to no one. Stock's still rolling to Run his it. left. He's going to tuck it away, and he's got the first down. He, he listen to you, Jim. <laughs> Stock still ran it, and he picks it up at the 31-yard line. They call timeout to move the chains, but it won't be very long before the clock will be running again. Brent Williams made the tackle. I wonder if that was really designed. I think they wanted to make it look like it was going to be a pass, but not have to put it up. And we see Bobby Bowden on the sideline pacing, and I don't blame him. If I wasn't tied to this headset, I'd be <laughs> pacing too. Nothing's keeping you from walking away, but who wouldn't want to walk away from this one? All right, first and 10 Seminoles in the 31. The give on the running play is to Platt, but they smell that one out. Platt hangs on. He'll be thrown for a loss by Derry Nelson. He was the first one to hit him. Boy, this Nelson is a good one. 6'2", 220 senior out of Fairmont, Nebraska. Let's watch Derry Nelson at, at uh, work here as they run the little counter back to the left. They hope to, hope to pop it through there, but no, Derry Nelson was there and also the linebacker for Brent Williams. Five minutes, 30 seconds left in the game and the clock is running. Second down and 12 for the Seminoles who take their own sweet time breaking out of the huddle and who can blame them? Here's the give to Platt out of the backfield. Seminoles content to run the ball and Platt has been at the line of scrimmage again by Brent Williams. And maybe a loss of a yard now they say no gain. They're going to give him back to the line of scrimmage. Third down now, 12. All right, what do you do here? Nebraska knows it's a passing situation. You see uh, Sam Childers coming into the game with a play. Do you actually put it up, or the way Ron S uh, Stark has been punting, do you just try to make them think you're going to pass it and, and get something on the ground and play well, it safe? I would bet my money. I'm a betting man. I believe Bobby's going to put it up here. Let's see what he does. Stock's still rolling right. He's looking for a receiver, pumping down the field long. He is going for Williams. Complete! 
Bill Williams has it. First and 10 at the Nebraska 32-yard line. And the Seminole players are going wild on the sideline. Let's take a look at this again. Phil Williams with the biggest catch of his career right here at Lincoln, Nebraska before 76,000 plus fans. Rick Stockstill rolling out. He's looking. He's got all the time in the world to throw, and that's what makes it two defenders there. But Williams really made a good catch. Yeah, he also made some contact, but we won't say anything about that. All right, we'll take it. First and 10 at the Cornhusker 32-yard line. The pitch out to Sam Flat. Flat up the middle inside the 30-yard line to the 29-yard line. Close to the 28 where they'll mark it before Derry Nelson brings him down. Oh, what a play that was. And we have an injured player on the field. It is number 75, Henry Wexter. And while they take a look at him, we'll pause for a commercial message. We'll be back in one minute. Florida State 15, Nebraska 14. Tom Bees with Jim Crosby. Look at that Nebraska bench, Jim. The players kind of de dejected there on the sidelines. And even four minutes left, Florida State at the Nebraska 29 with a second down and seven, and Florida State leads 15-14. Boy, if they could get seven on the board here or oh. eight or anything. I'm telling you. All right, Stock still has them down at the 29. It gives to Platt. He's got some room. Sam Platt inside the 25 to the 24 and gives Sam a lot of credit for hanging on. The Nebraskans, led by Kim Baker, trying to get the ball out of his arms, trying to strip him of the ball. He hangs on for a big five yards. Okay, we've only got three minutes and 30 seconds left in this ball game. The Seminoles would like to grind out a first down and then get a score and give Nebraska back the ball with a seven or eight point uh, deficit uh, and uh, not enough time to do anything with it. Barry Boldepenny comes in there now on third down and two. Out goes Hardis Johnson. So the extra tight end in there for some blocking. Here's the pitch out to Platt. Platt cuts back. He is close, but he does not have the first down. He does not have the first down at about the 28-yard line. And here comes Bill Capice. Bobby Bowden is not even hesitating. The clock continues to run. We are under three minutes to play. The line of scrimmage is the 28. Well, now they're moving it back to near the 29. The kicking tee will be placed, let's call it at the 31-yard line. So this will be a 41-yard attempt angled to the right. 41-yard attempt, angle to the right. Capiz trying for his fourth field goal. He's into it. The ball is long enough, and the kick is good. So at 2.37 left in the game, the Florida State Seminoles, 18, Nebraska, 14. We'll be back in a moment. Two minutes, 37 seconds is all that separates Florida State University from maybe its biggest win ever in collegiate football. Jim Crosby, I'm Tom Mees with Jim, and boy, we're excited up here in the booth, and we can imagine what the folks in Tallahassee are feeling right about now. You still got to sit on the edge of your seats because oh. it's going to go right down to the wire. All right, Capice will move into the kickoff. Back to receive Anthony Steeles and Ricky Simmons, and don't count the big red of Nebraska out of this one. When you got a Jarvis Redwine, you're always in the game. All right, back in the end zone. Simmons lets it bounce out of the end zone. So Capice does the job. He's so pumped up. Look at that. He picked up the kick and tease, running off by himself, signaling we're number one to the Florida State contingent. And now was the biggest defensive series of the year. Was he signaling that to the Florida State or the Nebraska contingent? Oh, you might be right. He may have a beat. You know, the great thing about that field goal, though, is it takes a little pressure off that they can't go for a field goal and even tie it. Right, they've got to go for the touchdown. So you just got to keep them from getting out of the end zone, but that's a tough thing to do. They've Christian, done, done it so far in the second half. Sorry, Tom. Well, they're 80 yards away. Are the Nebraska Cornhuskers first and 10. The fake to Redwine. Quinn straight back to throw now over the middle. Almost intercepted. Incomplete. We're going to have pass interference. Pass interference. They call it on Monk Bonasort, who is pretty dejected about it, but he's not arguing. All right, uh, let's watch it. Not only did Monk uh, commit pass interference, he might have broken up what could have possibly been an interception. Let's look at it. Because there was another player there, Jones coming over. Jones was coming over and zeroing in on it, but Bonasort went over his shoulder. Well, and uh, he's made some big plays, so, you know, they just got to put that out of their mind and hold them here. First and 10 now for Nebraska at their own 35-yard line. That's what you call a, an error of hustle, and coaches can put up with That's that. That's right. They hold him, no it problem. It was a marginal call. Could have gone either way, depending upon the, which way the referee saw it. He saw it as pass interference. So we're first and 10, Nebraska at the 35. Quinn straight back to throw again over the middle. It is incomplete, intended for the tight end, Finn. And that time, Bonasor was in the area, but made sure not to push the tight end. And I think Finn should have caught that ball. 
It was it was a little high, but he's made some good catches today. He's a pretty tall fella, and uh, he's got pretty good hands, so it was catchable. But the bad thing is, he was open. Right, the Seminole defense knows now that Nebraska, unless they pull a draw play or something tricky like a reverse, is going to pass it almost every down. So the front four knows they can go after Jeff Quinn, who really has only been sacked once today, to my memory. Second down and ten. Andre Franklin and Redwine in the backfield. Quinn wants to pass complete to Todd Brown, the split end, but not too big a gain, only for seven yards up to the 42. Todd Brown brings it in, and Monk Bonasort and Herring and Porowski help to bring him down. All right, we'll take the replay on this. Uh, the Seminoles will give them those little short ones like that as long as they can keep them in bounds and keep the clock running because the clock right now is down to about 2.05. 2.05 and running. Third down and three for the Nebraska Cornhuskers at their own 43. The Seminoles lead by four. The pitch out to Redwine. He's got some room. Redwine has the first down at the Florida State 49 before Keith Jones and Monk Bonasort combine to bring him down. All right, we'll watch Jarvis Redwine in action as you see all the Nebraska fans. They're all standing here now. They're in a battle. And the Seminoles let Redwine get a little bit of running room, but a solid tackle by Keith Jones. All three timeouts still remain for Nebraska if they want to use them. Seminoles have two left. 1.48 to go. The clock running. Quinn over the middle. It is complete. We have penalty flags down in the defensive backfield. The pass is complete to Anthony Steeles for a gain of about six, but hold everything. We have some yellow flags in the defensive backfield. It's against Florida State. Well, it's, it's going to give them a first down, but I believe it's going to give them a first down just about where the ball is anyway. As you see the pass the completed, well, I couldn't see what the what the call was from, from that picture, but you see Keith Jones and Porowski finally making the tackle, and here's the ref. Uh, is going to signal pass interference against the Florida State Seminoles. And Bobby Bowden is incensed on the sidelines. Bobby doesn't like that call at all. He doesn't. The interference occurred away from the ball. There you see the situation. 141 left in the game. And look at Bobby. He is really angry. He really is. He took his headset off, and when he does that, you know he's angry. Well, you certainly don't want to lose a game here uh, on, on a call like uh, they lost last week. All right. First and 10 for Nebraska. At the Florida State, 42. Let's hold them Seminoles. Franklin and Redwine are the eye backs behind Quinn. Quinn fakes the handoff. Looking over the middle. And it is incomplete. Intended for McCready. And McCready was wide open in the seam of the zone defense. And down at the 25. But that one was whistled through his hand. Boy, that's scary. Because he certainly was wide open there. And it, was, it just went through his hands. I don't know. I, it looked catchable to me there. 131 left, Tom. And boy, this is a knee knocker. All right. We see uh, on the sideline. Uh, Seminole coaching staff. Yeah, that's uh, Very Coach nervous. Shaw. Coach Shaw signaling uh, to his defense. James Gilbert limps out of the lineup. Mark Motzik, who came out earlier, is back in to replace James Gilbert. Second down and 10. Quinn to throw. Got some pressure over the middle. It is complete to the tight end, Finn. He may have the first down. Bonasor tried to hold him up. If they give him where his body fell, he will have a first down. We have a replay on it. Jeff Quinn looking over the Seminole defense. He's getting good protection again. And uh, Herring was trying to come in, trying to blitz from his linebacker position. But it looks like uh, they're going to measure for it. And the clock has stopped at 119, Tom. And they're saying, go Big Red here. The ball is on the Seminole 32. Let's take a look at the measurement. Is it or is it not? It is not a first down inches short inches short so the situation now is third down and inches third and inches and remember with 119 left Nebraska still has all their timeouts they have not called any as yet and the score is 18 14 Florida State but Nebraska is driving right down the field and now the official signals timeout called for by Nebraska but wait, wait a minute here come the Cornhuskers out of the huddle timeout. here they come out of the huddle What's going to be the call here, gentlemen? We'll keep it here. We don't want to leave at this point. Somebody forgot to let Nebraska in on the fact that they called the timeout. Yeah, that Jeff Quinn called his team out of the huddle, and Tom Osborne says, hold everything. Want to talk things over. Uh, well, we didn't call it, so don't blame it on us. <laughs> no, we didn't call it. They always blame it on television. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll keep it here. We don't want to risk losing any plays uh, here again during the game. We had missed a couple of plays because... Well, the official on the field did not see our excellent liaison at the sideline there, giving the signal, and so lucky thing we didn't break because Nebraska is going to be ready before a minute's up anyway. Yeah. Okay, 119 left, third down and inches for Nebraska. The Seminoles lead it, 18 to 14, and hey, that's unusual. The Nebraska players are asking quiet from their home fans so they can hear the signals. 
Todd Brown and Anthony Steeles are the wide receivers. Third and very short, just about the length, half a length of a football. The pitch out to Jarvis Redwine. He's got the first down. And the Seminoles hold him up after about a two-yard gain down to the 29. Remember, a field goal does not do Nebraska any good. They must score. It's a late flag. We I have a flag on the play. I think it's going to be against Nebraska. I didn't see that flag amongst the gold pants out there. Let's wait and see the indication. Here comes the referee. It was he thrown. says, holding Nebraska. I'm sorry, Jim. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was thrown late, uh, and it was thrown back into secondary. I think it was one of the... Uh, one of the men downfield was holding up a secondary man, and there's somebody injured. It's a Nebraska player injured on the field. One minute and 13 seconds left in this ball game. Seminoles clinging to a four-point lead, and Nebraska having a 15-yarder stepped off. That's Jarvis Redwine flat on his back at the 30-yard line. If we can get a shot of that, the two uh, Nebraska trainers over Jarvis there Redwine. Is. There he is. Oh, such a great back, and I know that, of course, Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles would like to not have to have to worry about him, but you don't want to lose a guy that way. No. That is indeed sad. A great All-American and 113 left. Jim, the Seminoles, if they win this game, are going to remember this penalty call. Hell, <laughs> the Nebraska Cornhuskers will remember it more than the Seminoles, I think. Of course, Jarvis Redmine was hurt a couple of times last year. Uh, he, he got hurt uh, against Missouri, I believe, and uh, he, he rebounds pretty well. And he looks like he's in, in a little bit of pain there, and we certainly hope that it's nothing serious. He is a fantastic ball player. Well, it doesn't look like he's going to see any more action today as he's being helped off the field by two trainers. Jarvis Redwine, who is over the 100-yard mark and then some again today for the fourth time this season. And the deserved standing ovation, not only from the big red crowd, but from the Florida State fans who are up here. They're giving Redwine a standing ovation. All right, Tom, with one minute and 13 seconds, you've got to keep a, an offense off the board that's been averaging over 40 points a game, and they've been held to 14 so far. Third down and 12. Third down and 12 for Nebraska. Even if they don't make the first down here, I feel safe in assuming that they'll go for it on the fourth down. So you've got to stop them in two downs, really. The ball is at the Seminole 44. Big penalty. Andre Franklin, the only setback behind Quinn. He's going to throw. Here comes the pressure. Quinn rolling to his right. He fumbles the football. Let's see what happens. No, they say he was going forward. It's an incomplete pass. They say that Quinn was going forward. He was hit by a host of Seminoles, including Arthur Scott. All right, let's watch it. I bet you Ron Simmons' eyes got as big as the football there. When he saw that ball pop up, he was reaching up, and he, he thought he was going to have a fumble recovery here. And you see Simmons fighting and, and Gary Futch fighting off the blockers. And there's Arthur Scott getting him. Futch actually hit him as his arm was forward. Back to live action, fourth and 12. This could be the ball game. They've got to get down to the Seminole 32-yard line for a first down. Quinn straight back to throw. Here comes the rush. He does throw. It is complete. A first down for Nebraska. The call is complete to John Noonan. Well, John Noonan is not even the starting tight end, but he certainly has played a great game. Great coverage there. Tom is just a super throw and a super catch, and boy, this ball game's on the line with 52 seconds. I tell you, you got to admire John Noonan for making that catch and Quinn for making that throw. The game was on the line. 50 seconds, the clock is running. Nebraska has two timeouts left. The ball in the Seminole, 21. A field goal does Nebraska no good. The Seminoles lead it by four. Quinn rolling to his left, looking for a receiver. He's going to keep it. And Quinn is hit hard by Herring at the 17-yard line. And the clock continues to run. But now it will stop as Nebraska uses a timeout. 34 seconds left in this game. There was some confusion on the right side there between Butler and Jones as to who was going to go out and cover. And it looked like for a second a wide receiver was going to be left all alone out there. Fortunately, he ran the ball, and they were able to make them spend a timeout. I'll tell you what, anybody with a heart condition in Tallahassee better call your doctor. <laughs> Second week in a row, we've got you, in, I don't know, Heart Attack City, I guess. It was that way in the Orange Bowl last week. I know one thing, my heart's right in my throat now, Tom. It'll be second uh, down and five. They give uh, Quinn five yards in the carry. They sent Alfonso Carriker back in at, at tackle, a freshman coming in there. Boy, he'll remember this 34 seconds, I'm sure, when he came back in before all these fans. And uh, they just want to keep a fresh, they want to keep fresh people in there. There was a little running to chase down the quarterback the last time. The tackles had to run uh, fairly far. And Gary Futch has run a lot on the last two plays and, and done a good job catching up. You should see the Seminole team, most of them, about 90% of them either standing at or kneeling right at the line. There is Bobby Bowden. Here we go. Hoping his defense can hold. Second down and five. Nebraska at the Seminole 16-yard line. Down at the 16, not the 21, as I had called it. 
Quinn looking to throw, pumping, now faking. Quinn pitches out to the best is high back. Florida, Florida State's got the football. Let's see who's got it. I believe Florida State has it. Let's wait and see for the official. Is it Florida State or Nebraska? Oh, they're going to give it to Nebraska. All right, let's the see. The give was to Roger Craig. He's inside the five of first and goal, and Nebraska calls time with 21 right, seconds what, left. What's the replay here? Here's the pitch out to Craig. Remember, Jarvis Redmond's on the bench, and here's Bobby Butler. Uh, he gets away from Butler, and the big tackle there. The ball is loose. Let's see if we can find out who recovered it. The ball is loose, and he must have gotten it back. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have it in that picture. I don't know who got it. The ball's at the three. 21 seconds left. That was Roger Craig on that run. Craig fumbled. It appeared to me, fans, as if Florida State recovered, and I think you can see why on that replay as we looked at it. I couldn't see how any red shirts could get in there and get it, but they did. So the situation is this. It is first and goal for Nebraska on the Florida State three. Nebraska has just called their last timeout. They have no more timeouts remaining. They have to get a touchdown. The score is Florida State 18, Nebraska 14. There you see it. The Seminoles have two timeouts remaining, but the game is on the line, and I'll tell you, momentum has switched teams again. He's wearing a red and white shirt. I'm too nervous to talk, Tom. You talk. <laughs> oh, listen, I'll tell you. I love doing these kind of games, but... Uh, they're Boy, up. Sure, be nice to come out on the winning side of one, wouldn't it? Yeah, it sure would. Big, big play. Come All on, right. though. Todd Brown is the split end of the top of the screen. Quinn asking the home crowd for quiet, and he gets it now, obviously. Roger Quaig now in a slot position. First and goal at the three. Quinn rolling left, looking into the end zone. It is complete, but down to the two. In down to no incomplete. They call it incomplete. All right. Uh, Steeles thought he caught that ball, but the official says no. But that does really, that's stop a the break. clock. That's a break for Nebraska. That's right. That does stop the clock at 17 seconds. And we're going to have another look at it as Quinn rolls to his left. And good pressure by Porowski. And uh, he just couldn't haul it in there. If he had, he'd have been at the one. Second down, but the downs really aren't important. Second to go at the three. 17 seconds. That's the important thing. No timeouts, remember, for Nebraska. Ball still on the three. Quinn rolling to the left. He's got the time. He's now under a rush. Porowski's got him. Fumble. Fumble. Florida State's going to win this football game. They've got the ball. Florida State. And they're going wow. Florida State will upset the third rank soon or third rank Cornhuskers in Nebraska. I even forget what state I'm in here. And you know who the man was that pulled him loose from that ball? Mr. Paul. Yeah, I got to shake that sensation. man's hand at the end of the game. How about this, huh? How about it? I tell you, I want to see up tonight with some partying. And I want to tell you right now, before I forget it, the Seminole team's going to be in at 9.30. I want to see that airport crowded. That's a Texas International Charter, right, Jim? That's right. The they charter? Leave, they leave here at 6 o'clock. They get there at 9.30. I want to see a traffic jam at that airport like you've never had before. The Seminoles, stock still lays down. Nebraska has no timeouts. The clock running down. Five, four, three, two, one. The game is over. And the Seminoles have won the biggest football victory in Florida State history. Look at Ricky Stockstill. He's got the ball. And here comes Childers over, and the Seminoles are mobbing him. The final score from Lincoln, Nebraska, is Florida State 18. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska 14 will be back in a moment. The Nebraska Cornhuskers have gone down to defeat this afternoon in Lincoln, Nebraska. The 108th consecutive sellout still standing, Jim, in stunned silence as the Seminoles of Florida State shut them down in the second half, came up with 15 points of their own, 18 to 14. How about running down the scoring plays in the game for us? All right, we're going we're gonna to have a look at some replays on the scoring plays. Well, we're going to replay uh, that fumble by Quinn. All right, the rel all right yes, that's what we're going to see, the fumble, the last offensive play of the game for Nebraska as uh, Quinn is rolling out, and here comes Paul Porowski. He grabs him by the shoulder pad, pulls him loose from the ball, and there's Gary Futch yep. falling out at. And uh, that wrapped it up for all intents and purposes. Now we go down the scoring plays as the Nebraska band serenades. A disappointed crowd out of the stadium. Well, the Florida State Seminoles shut out the highest powered offensive unit in the nation in the second half. They got no points, but it looked real tough for a while because Jeff Quinn passed to Todd Brown with 154 left in the first quarter.